Uh, hello, I'm MC Toon, and it's Toon's Day Night. Um, that means we've got a debate. This is the second in a doubleheader. Uh, this one, if you saw the last one, this was Sam, who thought he was Jesus or Christ or something. Um, this one will seem quite, I think, banal by uh, in comparison. This is Scott Strickland, uh, who, who is just a regular vanilla flat earther. Welcome, Scott. How are you? Oh, shoot, I got to get the right video up. Sorry. Lost slow motion on the YouTube. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks. Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm great. Um, I've uh, I think I've I've recovered my hit points after the last um, last uh, debate there. Uh, I don't know. You can't call it a debate. It was a little wacky. But um, anyway, Scott, would you like to, uh, I, I guess, uh, tell people about yourself or introduce yourself, whatever? Uh, just your, uh, just your typical flat earther average Joe, not an expert, but definitely, I don't know. I just, I think I got a good grasp of the basics and, uh, I've been debating people on the Facebook groups lately in the comments and it's, uh, it's not looking, I'm always disappointed with the debates. And so I'm here to debate someone who, uh, who can uh, probably kick my ass. So it'd be fun let it be said let it be done uh <laughs> brady brady photography says tune ignored my message brady send it again i i don't what message i don't want to ignore anything from you um <clears throat> anyway so uh facty flat earth is not a debate um i agree but uh you know we 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 play like it is for fun yeah I mean, I, I'm expecting a warm welcome from the comment section now. <laughs> I I typically recommend not following along, but if you want, you go ahead. Um... It's fun. So, uh, what what was it that made you somehow think that that the Earth was flat? Uh, I think well, the first one that got me was uh, I remember it was probably like a year like a year ago. I was watching the documentary and they're like zooming in on the boats you know and i thought it was strange that i like that i've gone through my whole life and no one ever showed me that that was possible you know zooming in on the boats or like that that you know i always you know you, you, i thought that when the boats go over the curvature that's when they go but you can zoom them you can zoom in and you but, can dream but, but scott no boat has ever gone over the curvature and been obstructed bottom up and then zoomed back in that's um, never happened what you have seen is you've seen boats that are not over the horizon that are visible, but then you zoom out and they're just too small to see. That's what you've seen. And then zoom and you can see them again because it, it that's what zoom does. It makes small things look bigger. Well, but it's I mean, never been obstructed bottom up and then zoomed in and then not obstructed anymore. Right? I, I mean, I guess that's think, possible. Think about the videos that you saw. They zoomed out, and then you couldn't see it because it was too small. Yeah, because of perspective. Or like, it's just because they're too small. I mean, it, well, like, I mean, like people, people, like, hey, so you say that, like, I you know that's a typical thing you get a lot, and it's like, oh, it's like, oh, you can't bring a boat in the back in the zoom. That's a lie. But it's like, I mean, how much of the boat do you want to see? Because to me, it's like you can. I mean, I guess it depends on how far the boat boat is, but it uh, seems like but you can. no amount of zoom has ever changed how much of the boat is obstructed. And, I, and I've asked many times, and, and every time, I've, on Facebook, wherever else, I, it's the same, the same types of videos. It's boat is too small to see. Zoom in, now boat is big enough to see. Zoom out, too small to see. Zoom in, big enough to see, but never boat gets obstructed bottom up, right? Here's the boat, and then goes away, and you can't see it anymore because the horizon obstructed it. And then zoom in, it's still not there. Or it's part obstructed. Zoom in, same amount is still there. Okay. Well, like, I, well, I mean, the point I was making, look, the, the reason it caught my attention was simply because of the fact that that I never saw a video do that. Like never in my life I saw a camera bring 
uh, bring a boat back into the picture, right? That was like, you, I thought that was strange. But, but you still have it. But <laughs> you only okay. saw something too small to be seen. Well, all right, well, let's forget about the boats. But like, okay, okay. let's say like, uh, I forgot about boats. They, pretty, like, it's like mountains and cities and stuff, or, or buildings where you can see too far. Right? Okay. And when you use the curvature calculator and get the distance and the height angle and you use the curv cur curvature calculator that that you guys like to use, we still see it. All right. Well, that's that's a great one then. So I can, uh, the, the, the curvature calculator I use is Walter Bislin, uh, Advanced Curve Calculator. Uh, so... And I said, um, beforehand, we said, hey, get your favorite um, see too far observation, right? Yeah. And all right, so I'm going to prepare the thing here. So you have, do you have yours? Your, your, what you think is the, the, the see too far example that we definitely need to pay attention to? Well, the one I like, uh, I'm sure you've seen it before. It's the one, uh, Mount Kanagu or Duranism. Uh, like doubt, you know, 175 miles away, a thousand feet up. Uh, that one, it's a All popular right, so one. Let's, let's so. get the, the details. I'll, I'll share my screen so you can see what I'm doing. So I've done this before and I've never seen a flat earther actually do it right. I've only seen them use the wrong formula and ignore important things. So. Little fixing on the to do on this. Hold on a sec. That's not right. I'm trying to make it so that people can see you. There you go. Okay. How far away is it? Uh, it was uh, 175, I believe. 175 miles. Yeah. Okay. And there are a thousand was... feet. Up. No, it wasn't exactly a thousand feet. It was the actual... you typed in thousand? Oh yeah, I mean, it was right around there. All right. Well, then let's get the let's get the right numbers. Pretty sure he. I mean, on the video, he typed in 1,000 exactly. I'm pretty sure. And it was on a church, and the church was right around a thousand feet elevation. Church. That's what he said. To get the view of Mount Kanagu. Um. I. I all right. Let me look here. I can play the. From, I got the video link from. From who? No, I mean, like, just the YouTube video. Yeah? Uh, can you, can you send it? Uh, let's see. It's all went to the full screen. There we go. Yeah, or do you want to? All right, I'll stop sharing. You can share it. <clears throat> just a second. Yeah, go ahead. sent it to me all right hold on i'll grab it and i'll put it up and it's from it's from jaron yep yeah i'm sure you'll have a lot of things to say about him i mean I'll, i know he's I really gonna, like that video i know he's gonna get the math wrong because i've it, it's i've actually never seen uh, a flat earther get the math right so all right There's there's Jaron doing his thing. I'll share this to you so you can see it. I have it. I have it. The audio muted. Uh, is there music? There's music. I don't. Let's see. So you'll see that coming up here shortly. Oh, yeah. He's got some music going. Yeah, I teach uh, 
teach music. It's Darth. It's not even Jaren. But I hear Jaren's voice in there. It's his. Yeah, it's Jaren. Jaren video. All right. So I see right there. He's not using. He's not using a good calculator. He's using one that ignores refraction, pretends that it doesn't exist. Right. Oh, that you're gonna use a calculator that. Of course, I'm gonna use a calculator that fraction every properly, single time. that properly represents the globe. Yes, you have to, because otherwise but, you're just lying about it. Because there is refraction, it happens. Okay, I mean, I guess if it calculates the the density of the air and everything. Well, I mean, you could measure it, but nobody ever measures it except for at the core over Lake Balaton, but that didn't go well for them. Kind of, kind of to backfired on them. So, all right. Thousand feet eye height. So I'll put that in. And then he's going target distance 175. Yeah, see, he just goes target hidden and pretends that refraction doesn't exist. But over water, 0.5 is, is an appropriate estimation for it, right? And what's the target size? Uh, the Mount Kanagu, the peak? Yes. Uh, it's like 9,000. I don't know. 9,000 feet? Yeah, right around 9,000. I don't I forgot the exact, but no, it's nine. Well, that certainly isn't a problem. But let's see. Of Kanagu is 9,400. Oh, well, there you go. So you're talking about 3,000 feet. These mountains should be the very tip right here. All right. So he said 9,000. All right. So, so using the advanced earth curve calculator and putting in a refraction of 0.5, which is, which is in, in, in the middle estimation of the, the amount hidden would be 4,800. So about half. Refraction slices the feet in half is that what you're saying or even more than that no wait if, if, because if, if without you pretend, the refraction if you pretend that there's no refraction then then 12 yeah 12000 yeah but there is refraction so unless unless you can sh show that there's no refraction between there there you go but i mean 4000 I mean, oh, so I'm, I'm that, not. That. I'm not just saying refraction blindly, right? Refraction has been measured, right? So here, here is here's a whole page mc2.net slash refraction, a whole page on the the empirical measurements of the effects of refraction in 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 the air. So they use typically it's done as a, a they call it the coefficient of refraction. And it gets a a value that usually is lowercase k. So but, okay, so so if you put in that refraction, you're saying that over half of the mountain, over half of the mountain that you're seeing in the video is a mirage. No, none of it's a mirage. I didn't say mirage. Mirage is reflection, typically, not just refraction. So when I mean, when, I've, looked at, I've looked at examples of of like refraction, and it like you can see it like bends and distorts, but it's obvious. Like it's, I don't know. Not I don't, that sounds that Not sounds always. really far out there. <laughs> well, like how is like it does seem like it's a magical word to make the ball it's not, make sense. It's it's not magical at all. It's empirically measured, and that's why I have this this page here, mctune.net slash refraction. It's it's several different empirical measurements of refraction. So. And this one, this one is very notable here. If you see this graph here, this is over water on uh, a sunny day. And you see this, this big increase, just the left graph. This increase here is, is over time. So as you go later in the day towards sunset and past sunset, the, the amount of refraction greatly increases over water. And it peaks up here almost at, at a K of 18. Okay, but well, what, what you're claiming, so just try to understand. So the so you're saying that it's reflected, the, 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 the light is being reflected? No, refracted, bent. 
refracted, but it's not a mirage. It's it's what yeah, is a, it? A mirage typically when when you're talking about mirages, you're talking about an actual reflection. And that happens when when the index of refraction hits one. It is called the total internal reflection. And so that can happen when you have these boundary layers where where there's distinct changes in temperature. Typically it's temperature that happens at low low elevation. And you can see that if you look at a road on a hot on a sunny day, right? Sunny makes makes it uh, much more drastic. So you look at the road on a sunny day, you can see that thin layer looks like a mirror right on top of the road. That is an extreme example of a mirage. And and you know the, the classic mirage is is you know the, the cartoon where it's, you, you see an oasis across the sand, it looks like water. Right, because yeah, I'm just, because I'm just having sand... a hard time wrapping my mind around what, like, how how can a mountain be there when it's not really there? You know. <clears throat> well, you look in a mirror, and you see yourself. Well, like, when I, you're I not like, actually there. It's also like there's right? like the other light. It's not just you can do things with light. What about like I mean like I understand like I understand the basics of perspective and how. You know, the horizon will appear totally different on a, you know, uh, when there's lots, well, the, the horizon can be drastically different depending on the, the, the atmosphere. So uh, I get that, but like objects being there that like a whole freaking mountain, half of a mountain being there when it's actually behind the curvature of the earth. Yeah. There's no problem with that at all. That, that's just, oh, there's a problem. That's just normal physics. I mean, like that's. I mean, so I'm like, no, Scott, that just did, seems did you, absolutely. How much? Ridiculous. How much physics have you studied? It doesn't matter. This is just basic common sense. What you're telling me is no, that no, 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 that no. mountain this is, is not this is basic. There. This is basic physics, not basic you're common sense. How much physics have you studied, Scott? No, I'm like I, I already told you. I'm not an expert. I don't have okay. any. So, so, so your your gut feel about it doesn't have any backing. To it, right? I'm just saying it, it seems like a ridiculous claim. Like absolutely. Like yeah. if that's your gut feel. Like I said, your gut yeah. feel doesn't have any backing to it. But this, this is also like right on the screen here, this is empirical evidence. Empirical like, measurements of the effects of refraction. Okay, okay. This is what I'd want to like in order for me to believe that, I would have to see like um there would have to be a, a like an experiment done where there's a where there's a you know a curve between one point and the other, and they can refract 3,000 feet of image back to the viewer. Like, that's what I would have to see in order to believe it. Like, nobody cares about your incredulity. But that, that's like, this right to, here is, is empirical, empirical measurements like. of refraction. So I don't believe it. I have a particular need that needs to convince me. Doesn't matter. It's been done. The burden of evidence has been, the burden of evidence has been met, Scott. Right here mctune.net slash refraction many like many different yeah. measurements of refraction well a math equation that can't be applied to an it's actual it's not experiment. a math equation it's empirical measurements out in the field measuring the effects of refraction this is the this is the result of people standing up a distance from each other with theodolites that are precision angle measuring devices this isn't math this is the result of real measurements. So hand waving saying, oh, the math, math, math. This isn't math. This is actually people that went and measured things. Okay, well, what are so what is exact what's this is the exact study you're talking about? Or is it this stuff stuff that you've looked done yourself? It's things or, that I've that I've educated myself on. Right. Well, so I'm just interested, science, like, for, science just, just saying for later on, when I, like, I want to go look into it, and I want to go, you know, I'm not going to just shout nonsense and not listen, so. Yeah. So, it, myself, I have not done uh, quantification of refraction. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't mean to, have. I didn't mean to ask it like that, like, well, have you done this yourself? I don't okay, mean to okay. do that. I'm just saying, like, um, whatever you're looking at, um, okay, I, I can see Nicktoon.net refraction, I can go check it out and see. Yep later on and, and do my homework so but yeah and and refraction is always present 
and it's it's more uh lower down when you get closer to the ground it's more and when you're over water it's even more than that and when you're over water on a day where there's temperature extremes like when it's been sunny then that that's when you get maximum refraction so when you see a flat earther go and so when do it, when some sort of measurement sunny, oh, over sorry. water when you see somebody do measurements like a laser experiment over water on a sunny day or in the evening of a sunny day this 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 peak is after sunset you see this on the left side here this peak is after sunset the highest amount of refraction is after sunset so when they do a laser test over water after sunset it is in intentional or not it is is using refraction to let you see things more easily than than if over on the right side for example if it was an overcast day but it's still there one uh one at, at the bottom of this particular graph on the right is is one and at the top is two and the, the other graph it goes from zero to 18 so very drastic yeah i i get okay I, I just also i can also see it as you know when it's a clear you know just a, like for pers you know we can see farther on a clear dry day right and you know the hurt you know for typically, as far as pers typically when it's when it's not major refraction like if it's overcast you cannot see quite as far because the refraction effects are, are reduced yeah it's just it's just interesting when one one side is saying refraction and the other saying is pers it's perspective and it can be i can see how it can be seen both ways yeah well refraction is empirically measured and perspective is just things getting smaller with increasing distance that's all that perspective is and we can calculate it it's covered in eighth grade math yeah i mean i've also seen definitely examples of the horizon being at drastically different levels depending on um you know atmospheric conditions like it'll be really high or really low exactly uh, and that sunset. is exactly the effects of refraction so if the horizon moves at all what is causing it refraction if perspective when you're not moving doesn't cause something to move refraction definitely does Right. As the salt, the salt yeah. and sea is a classic example. If you, if you remember that one, we see the, the horizon moving up and down over the course of the day. And that is that is due to refraction. Or perspective. <laughs> perspective doesn't make things change if you don't change. Perspective well, uh, is just things get smaller with distance. That's it. That's all that perspective is. There's no magic to perspective. Something gets smaller, right? When it's close, it's big. When it's far, it's small. That's perspective. But there are conditions where that, you know, if the atmosphere is, yeah, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. So we're gonna go back and forth saying the same thing. Yeah, I'll, 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 this is the demonstration of perspective, right? It's this big, right? That's how big the cards are. When I move it back, it gets smaller. That's perspective, that's it. And the amount that it shrinks is is calculatable with eighth grade math. It's just solving a triangle. Yeah, it just it just seems like that refraction stuff is assuming curvature. No, it, it, I don't like know. I said, it <laughs> is empirically measured. It is not just math, and it is not assuming curvature. It is a quantification of the amount of the bending of the light ray over distance well, it, based it, on based it, on atmospheric conditions. If that's true, like, uh, I mean, is there no way to replicate this on a smaller scale where you can see things that are blocked by an object due to refraction? Sure. Like, that would be interesting to see. Yeah, Ranty did it. Before he became, a, a, before he gave up flat earth ranty did it himself in a in a tank you know ranty former flat know. earther i don't know okay he, he used to be a flat earther and he's not anymore and he actually set up a tank so the classic uh test is to create a, a, a tank with sugar in it and you, you saturate it with sugar but at the bottom all the the sugar is um dissolved in the water but as you get higher up there's less sugar dissolved in it and it creates the, the same thing you have an index of refraction gradient so at the bottom 
the, the refraction gradient or the index of refraction is higher than at the top. And people have shown lasers through it and you can see it bend. So right in the middle, you can see it would go over something. So okay. it's been done. But you might, you might like, I mean, do you understand, like from, a, from someone that, that first times comparing the evidence of one side showing you like a literal mountain and then the other saying it's not really there. Now, you know how so one here, person would be like, well, so I'm going to go you're, you're kind of giving this, you're giving yourself evidence. away, Scott. <laughs> what? You haven't, you haven't done your own research. You haven't uh, looked at both sides. It seems that you've only looked at the flat earth videos. I, I've been, I mean, I'm trying to under, like, that's like the thing. It's like when I, when I go to look at the flat earth, it's like they, I mean, like the, the people that are debunking flat earth, they're always like, there's most of the videos they purpose. I've seen them purposely misrepresent it to make it look ridiculous. Like that's pretty much every video you'll find on the top YouTube search. So I, it's just hard to, to, to be honest, Scott, it is ridiculous. We, we enjoy a little chocolate. at it. But yeah. Well, I'm, I'm at the point where it's like the heliocentric model just sounds like I can't even separate it in my mind from like Star Trek and science fiction. It's just like, it's that out there now, but when did you say Star Wars and we're in the Star Wars shirt. Yeah. Star, it was, I love Star Trek and Star Wars, but <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm like, oh damn, I don't really. Have you seen the new, the newest Star Trek series? People I in the have. chat, have you seen it? Strange New Worlds? I'm, I have enjoyed that one a lot. Um, refraction. I just, I, it would take a lot of homework to really understand that. I, I, I'd have to do my homework to really dive into refraction because what I've seen, it's, it's not what you claim it is at all. But uh, like I said, I gotta do, I gotta look into it. So note that the different, there's a difference between a mirage and refraction. Uh, so if you see the, the Chicago skyline and the weatherman who says this is a mirage, he's actually wrong. That is not a mirage. That is better, uh, better, uh, more appropriately called just the, the effects of refraction. Typically, the, the most common mirages are upside down. You see, you see it up, upside down, but there's um, called an inferior mirage. There's superior mirages as well, where it's double reflected. So, so what about like a false sunset? So are you saying that's also refraction because it, you know, when you get the water level out and, and it's actually and the horizon is actually higher than it appears. Um, I very rarely have seen a water level show the horizon be above the water level. It's like, well, like, you know, when you see you're like the boats, it looks like the boats are floating in midair. Oh yeah. Those, those but are you get the water level out and the, and it's actually like the horizons much yeah, higher. That, that would be most likely a mirage, a superior mirage, a mirage. <laughs> yeah. Where, especially where you see the boat and then you, you don't, it looks like it's just sky underneath the boat. And then you see the horizon below that, but you get the water level out and it shows you where the horizon actually is. So how is that not I'm having a hard That's, time separating perspective from refraction. None of that is perspective. Perspective is something getting smaller with more distance. This is perspective. Okay. That's it. Got smaller, got bigger. That's perspective. Uh, refraction and reflection can cause all sorts of crazy things in high temperature variance conditions at low elevation. So if you want to see something Without those, you need to get away from the water and get away from low elevation. Get high. But, but as soon as you do an experiment over land, it's a lot harder to claim that it's level. You know, it, it is. There's ways to do it, uh, and but you can you can get to a higher elevation and then measure, for example, the dip of the horizon from from not really low. Do it from thirty feet up or ninety feet up. Right? And do it on a day that's overcast. Because when it's overcast, you haven't had the sun um, warming the water, causing this, this temperature differential. Okay, well, that's, 
that's an interesting topic to refraction versus perspective. It's, uh, you, you still gonna, seem to think that perspective is something other evidence. than what it is. You've watched you again. You gave yourself away. Flat earthers in YouTube videos constantly make claims about what perspective is, but but it's not. It's just things getting smaller. That's it. That's all it is. Like I said, you can calculate it. There's a formula for it, the angular size formula, or you can just solve a triangle. Right? You, you, if you know how far you are from something, and if you know how high it is, you have side, you have the 90 degree angle, and then you have side. Side angle, side. You can solve that triangle. You remember? Solving triangles, SAS, angle, side, angle, the side, yeah. side, side. Remember those? Angle, angle, side. And you can't solve angle, side, side because there's two solutions for it. All right. I think, well, now we're talking. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. There's just, a, you know, it's just interesting. Uh, I don't know. It's just, there's so many examples out there. And it's just, Hard to wrap my mind around it all being refraction. Yeah. Um, now you 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 linked to a video by Dearth, and you mentioned Jaren. So wh which one is your the one you, you would maybe watch the most or had had the most Im influence on you, or or is it somebody else? Um, I really don't know. Actually, that's probably the only video I've ever seen by Jaren. Um, uh, uh, Dearth, I've seen a, I've seen a few of his interviews, and I. I think he just says uh, I, I wouldn't cons yeah I wouldn't go to him for my the expert ex um, opinion but he's uh, I think he has a good basic introduction to it okay so was it 200 proofs from Dubai well I don't, I don't think it's I think I don't know it, it I feel like you're just trying to attack the source now no people I'm, I'm just trying to figure out who, who's your papa Fleur. Yeah, well, I, I've seen a few of your videos. I, I, I've seen how you go after the source and just, okay. you know, I feel like that's easy to do on both sides. All right, so. Oh, well, uh, like, uh, just like, you know, you just, we're just, I'm just talking about evidence, like just, just the evidence that's being presented on both sides. It doesn't really matter who it's being, okay. who's presenting it. Now, have you seen, have you seen people talk about uh, flights between Australia and South America? A little bit. I've seen a little, um, just a little bit talking about emergency landings and some flight paths making sense on a flat Earth. And I've also seen the opposite. I've seen um, flight paths making sense on the globe. And mm -hmm. um, so, so now, now, so yeah, now, a, 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 if you've watched the, especially the the emergency landings one, the the, the most common one is a, a flight from somewhere in Asia to L.A. And they stopped in um, Alaska. And then Flat Earth Banjo pulls out a Mercator projection, not a globe, a Mercator projection, and draws a line straight across between them on a Mercator projection, which is not how flights are done. Flights are done on a, on a globe doing a great circle route, which will bring it near uh, uh, Alaska. So Alaska is the globe place to land that flight. But because Flat Earth Banjo doesn't understand how flights are done, doesn't understand Mercata projections, he gets it all wrong. And then people who don't quite have that background watch it are fooled by it. Yeah, I think like the, the basic one you hear a lot is, you know, pilots don't account for curvature when they're flying. They don't constantly dip the nose down. I thought that was interesting. Like, uh, that, Why would you expect that? Because we, I mean, if we live on a ball that's curving and you're dry flying at 500, 600 miles per hour, okay. Um, and you, and you would how, assume that you would have to. How, how long would it go for one degree of curve? I don't know off the top of my head, but I, I know it's a, it's a, it's it's an amount, right? It is. It's 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 something that you would have to be aware of, or at least have an instrument that's taking account of curvature, which and and your 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 years of physics background tell you this. 
Uh, no, no, just common sense, average Joe. You know? Okay, so I, common sense doesn't actually give us anything. It's a little Physi bit. Physics is what we want to look at. <laughs> I mean, we just listened to, after your last uh, interview. I think common sense definitely plays a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he he lacked he lacked common sense. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let me let me show you. Let's see. I have a uh, just last week. I had I had somebody who didn't quite understand. How flights worked, even though my, my brother and my dad and my uncle are pilots. I haven't even asked them yet. Um, I should. They would know. Well, but yeah. Um, All right. So. Share this to you first. So there are. There are the four main forces of flight. See it there, you've got lift, you've got the downward, you know, where the weight points, which is straight down. You've got thrust and drag. So for this, thrust and drag isn't quite what we're going to talk about. We're talking about the lift and the component of weight opposed to lift. See it going straight down there, right? And, and a plane tips up a little bit. It's exaggerated in this, in this picture, this diagram. But the center of gravity is where the plane pivots. So if the downward angle changes, then it pivots immediately around, it just as a response, it, it pivots. All right, you, you understand that? The center of gravity? Yeah. So now here is, here is an airplane, and then you see that dashed line there. This is, this is what you're, you imagine is, is what happens, that if you, you, just, you just fly... You'll just follow that dashed line. Is that what you imagine? Yeah, I mean, if it's going off a level instrument, I mean, I, I already know what you're going to say. But yeah, there, there's no, there's no instrument. It's just everything's automatic because there's a center of gravity on the plane, and it responds to the forces applied to it. So the lift and the weight. You see, I put, I move these. I have these uh, arrows here. You've got the up, upward arrow is the lift, slightly off. Uh, off of the downward weight okay right weight is, is straight down and, and then so you, you imagine that this is what's going to happen and after a while it will have gotten out there where, where it's now essentially gained elevation that's not what actually happens because you can see there the the downward angle there has changed the the direction of down has changed and at the same time, of course, because you're at higher elevation, the lift is reduced. If you did this, you'd actually stall. This is what actually happens because there's a pivot. So if you go 60 nautical miles, you've gotten all of one degree. And there's your, your answer I'm giving you. One degree of change. So 60 nautical miles is about 70 statute miles. If you're flying, say you, you're uh 500 miles an hour which is which is a you know commercial jet it it's not instantaneous one degree you have to go quite a few minutes before you get one degree of curve and in the meantime there's differences in in air pressure and turbulence and things like that that cause the very slight variations so the amount of of dip that you would you would do that you'd notice is is completely obstructed by all of the other things that are happening in the plane you you don't feel it because it's not instantaneous either the human vestibular system can can measure two degrees change per minute think per second two degrees change per second well this is one degree over 10 to 20 minutes way way lower than the human vestibular system's ability to change to to sense angular rotation so so like so the pilot are you, are you i'm just trying to understand like are you, the, does the pilot have to even be aware of this or is no, gravity no, no. The, or the gravity kind of doing that yeah the physics of of the forces involved will cause the plane to automatically pivot on the center on the center of gravity when the downward vector changes direction
right? So in center of gravity, or you, you could say center of mass is a more modern, appropriate way to say it. So that's what actually happens. You don't need to do anything because a plane is, is trimmed. So they, they set the elevator to, to maintain their elevation and then they set the throttle at the same time. And when you do those, it, it will maintain your elevation based on the air pressure. And the air pressure on a globe is a sphere. Air pressure, if the earth were flat, would be flat. And if the earth were concave, then, then the air pressure would, would be in an inverted sphere. Okay. That's uh, it's interesting. I just feel like, I just feel like the, how the, I guess the real question would be, how does the instrument determine what is level? That's what my, but, that, I don't even know the answer. Like, I'm just thinking. How does like a, the instrument in the plane that tells them that they are level, that they are at a certain yeah, altitude. So, so how, this, this work here doesn't, doesn't rely on an instrument. This happens because it's set to a particular trim and thrust. And if you want to increase your elevation, you increase your thrust so that your lift is higher. And then, then after a while, it will again get to the new equilibrium where the pressure, the, the, the pressure reduction, because you get higher elevation, matches the new lift that you have from the new thrust. Now, how does an airplane instrument determine level? Well, they have several ways that they do that. Um, they have mechanical gyroscopes. That's mostly about the left to right is, is well, not most, they, they do both. And they have, and uh, flat earthers commonly ignore that there are pendulous veins on it. So uh, a, a gyroscope stays rigid in three-dimensional space. So if, if there were no pendulous veins, and if the gyroscope did not have any uh, friction forces on it, then there would be a problem because after you go five degrees of curve, you would now have everything off. But the pendulous veins in it, when, when it starts to tip a little bit, there's a, there's a little thing that swings out of the way of a port. And then air blows out of that port, pushing the, the pendulum of the gyroscope slowly back to being uh, vertical with respect to the direction of the downward vector. You say a lot of things that I never even come across in the in the globe comment section. And again, so I'll, uh... again if, if you'd watched not just Flat Earth videos, you would have come across these. Well, they didn't. They didn't link them. <laughs> of course, but the flat earthers aren't going to link them. It's, no, Globers. I'm in the Globe discussion group. Okay. Mostly oh, you mean Glo on Facebook? Yeah. But uh, no, it's interesting. I mean, uh, you, you, I, I don't know if you've noticed. I'm always linking things. Okay, I'm. I'm always and, kind of. And, I, yeah. and other Globers, I'll say it, don't often link to evidence, and part of the reason why is because we are. We've just been so many times. Flat earthers demand evidence and don't look at it all the time. Give you a link. I, I link my website all the time and, and almost every time flat earthers don't look right. So how, how many times do you link something and then a flat earther doesn't look and you're like, I just think it again. Yeah, it, it's just, I, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's back to the common Joe perspective. It's like, if the plane is, you know, curving over the earth, the, the, it does seem like the pilot would have to be aware of it at least. And then it's like, we're assuming. And according to physics. I mean, what physics? <laughs> I just went I mean, over it. I just covered the physics of flight, the main, the main forces in flight. Yeah, but I, I, it's, but you're in like, there's gravity in there, right? There's. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, and, I, and yeah. I just said, I just said the downward force. I, I'm not, I didn't use the word gravity. Don't want to get off topic. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. I know it's fun because I'll, uh, you know, go back watch this video. And... So, so now pilots do need to take into account the curvature, though, because when they 
when a pilot plans the route, they need to get the correct amount of fuel in the plane. Now, how do they know the distance between from where they're starting and where they're ending? Um, uh, based on, yeah, based on the, the miles in between. And how do you know the miles in between any two arbitrary points? Based off a of, of map and measurements. Well, well a, a map, I have maps on my wall right here. These are Lambert conformal conic projections. So all of these maps, all the maps that, that uh, flights are typically planned on are projected from a globe. And so if you're doing it on paper charts, which isn't common anymore, but it still can happen and, and many, many regulations require them to have backups of paper flights. My son is actually studying to be a pilot and I, no, my, my brother's, he just got his commercial yeah. grade. So, so I'm going to buy my son a, uh, FAA sectional chart for when he, when he gets his, uh, he passes his test. That's awesome. Um, but to, to measure the distance on that, there's processes, but if you're going to go on a longer flight, you need to go between chart paper charts, or they use, they use software nowadays and the software uses the Haversine formula to calculate the distance between points. The Haversine formula is a spherical trigonometric formula that, that, that absolutely requires the Earth to be a sphere. It assumes the Earth to be a sphere with a particular radius. That is how pilots take into account the, curv the curvature of the Earth when they plan their route. They need to get the amount of fuel needed. So especially if you're doing a long route, you're going over the, the ocean, right? You need to know how far it is very precisely so you know uh, how much fuel you're going to use. So they, they, they take the distance, they take the weight of the plane, they take their burn rate, and then they add in a few things so they, they can taxi and they can, they can do circles if they need to, to wait in order to land or go to another airport. All those things are taken into account when they're planning their flight. So they do take the shape of the earth into account when they plan their flight. The, the maps also take that into account because they're, they're projections from a globe. So that's how pilots take into account the curvature of the Earth. Yeah, this is not a topic I'm too, too well, uh, haven't looked into too much, but. And, and I've asked flat earthers that, that <laughs> I love doing this because I always get silenced. What is the formula for a distance between points on a, on a, on flat Earth? Right, the ones that say that they've been around for ten years, they don't have an answer. Because uh, I've heard, the, I've heard the same. I've heard, where's the, uh, where's the radius? You know. Well, yeah, and that, and then I link to my website mc2.net/r that has six measurements of the radius of the Earth. Right. right. Um, but what? So I ask a flat earther, where, what's the measurement? What's the radius of of the equator? for flat earth and i never get an answer on that yeah well because we can do the math on it we say well we know how far it is from the north pole to the equator right it's 90 degrees times 60 nautical miles we do that we can then use uh, two pi r to get their circumference it doesn't match so yeah as, i mean i, as soon I, as I you, get i get that you're much more well versed in the subject and you can I mean, you you can really do, yeah, the, but, do the but you should test that yourself. You should say, well, when you see the map that Dearth uses, you say, oh, well, then the radius of the equator must be two pi r, right? But then you you look at it and you're like, oh, that doesn't actually work. It's not actually that. It's less than that. Or you see Dearth saying that that the, the, there are no flights. He says there's no flights between Australia and, and South America, but there are. Qantas has a flight QF-27 between Sydney and Santiago. Direct flight, nonstop, takes 12 hours. He says that they, need, that they have to go to two flights, but they don't. They actually have just one flight. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just thought, yeah, not, not flight path is not, not my, I haven't looked into it, so I yeah. wouldn't really know. Um, so, um, I would. So yeah, another. I mean, some topics that I thought would be interesting is. I mean, just gravity is kind of interesting to me. 
the whole topic of gravity. Uh, it does seem like there's a lot of question marks um, with gravity. Um, uh, the one, the one that I looked at um, was like you know like the uh, the Brian Cox experiment when he drops a feather in a bowling ball. Yeah, in the in the the evacuated chamber. Yeah, and so it's like it, it's. It's interesting because he's like, okay, so in a vacuum, the density is zero. And the density of the medium. Yeah, yeah the medium yeah. of density is zero. And so the feather and bowling ball fall at the same speed. And like in my mind, it's like it's it's like it's there's lots of different things going on because I'm like, okay, well, if the density is zero, objects fall at the same fall rate. Okay. Or then all of a sudden the, the mass doesn't matter between the feather and the bowling ball in this in this experiment um is there we have different masses and and you know complete you know denser objects right so i just thought that was interesting it's like okay well this this kind of you know uh so what's causing the objects to be pulled down by gravity it's not is it mass doesn't appear to be is it um is it the, the medium of density? It, it kind of like, to me, that was like, that was pretty interesting. I'm like, well, that, that makes sense to me. Cause I mean, just basic, or once again, just basic average Joe perspective, the medium of density will make a rock fall slower in water or the medium, you know, or it falls. Yeah. It, there, there's wind resistance um, is, is why a feather falls slower mostly. Okay. But, but, right. I mean, it could be, or the, or the fact that the medium, the dense, the medium of density of zero, would also be the reason it fell. Yeah, because there's because there's no wind resistance then. But it, right. you know, but assuming that mass is what causes objects to be pulled down by gravity, obviously gravity didn't give a crap about mass in that situation. Well, but it does. All right. Here is, here is the formula for gravity, the the law of gravitational attraction F equals G, and it's a little hard because I have uh, background on Hold on. I haven't checked out the comment section in a while. I'm sure it's good. Where are we going? All right, let's see if this is more legible. F equals G, M1, M2 over R squared, the radius squared, right? But then, so so that's the, that's the, that's for the force. That gives you the force. But we're looking for the acceleration due to gravity, right? Yeah, I probably not look at the chat. Yeah, I don't think you're going to want to look at the chat. All right, F equals MA then. Distracted. So F equals MA is one of the laws of motion, right? This is physics. So I don't know if you, if you like I said, I, if you didn't take physics, then I wouldn't expect that you'd have this. No. Right? But this is this is physics. It's, it's, it's covered in, in high school physics. Uh, but you did take algebra, unless you did not graduate you know, I, high I'm school. Just, I'm, just right? looking, I'm, just, I'm just observing the, the experiment and trying to make sense of what is causing those objects to fall. Is yeah. it the medium of density? Is it the mass? Is it the density? Okay. All right. How is gravity? Other than is it curvature of space-time? All of a sudden... All right. Here we go. Hold on. So here, like I've, I've taken... This is, this is algebra 1, which is typically covered about ninth grade. Okay? So I've taken... The two F's, we've got F here and F here, these two forces. So we don't want the force, we want to know the acceleration. Well, we've got acceleration right there, F equals MA. So what I've done is I've taken MA equals G M M over R squared. And this little M here is the mass of the object. The big M is the mass of the Earth. That's what causes the gravity, the 9.8 meters per second squared gravity. So I've, I've done this equation here. Now, what's going to happen is this M... And this M will cancel, giving A equals G M over R squared. Show the cancel. And my A looks like a nine. I apologize for that. So there we go. We've got A equals G M over R squared. Do you see how the mass of the object, the, the bowling ball, or the feather is now no longer even in the equation. The acceleration that's experienced 
is the same regardless of the mass of the object if there's no other forces involved. Um, so it, it it's not it's not maybe a common sense thing, right? Common sense might tell us that something that has is heavier is going to fall faster. But in reality, it's it's not actually expected when you apply the physics. So so you're saying in a vacuum the the mass cancels out. Yes. Because the the because it, you, we're not looking for force, we're looking for what is the acceleration. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared, independent of the of the mass of the object. So force is force is acceleration with mass. That's what force is. Acceleration is just how fast it accelerates, how fast the speed changes without the mass being in, uh, involved. So yeah, it's uh, we okay. do not predict. So physics says that the bowling ball and the feather should both fall at the same rate in a perfect vacuum. And when we test that, they do fall at the same rate. Okay. I guess I would just assume that mass w was playing a big role. So what is causing, what is gravity pulling down on? Is it, what is it? So, so gravity is mass attracting mass. So the mass of the bowling ball and the mass of the earth, and the mass of the feather and the mass of the earth. So it is mass, is what you're saying. It but is the mass. vacuum mass cancels out. No, in a vacuum, you don't have wind resistance. Mm. That's okay. what's that's what's that's what's different. That's why you do it, that's why they do it in a in a vacuum chamber. Because then that wind resistance is gone. So the actual acceleration downward when when the air is there is the same acceleration but there's other forces at play there can be multiple forces happening at the same time on a bowling ball there is there is the upward force due to wind resistance but the amount of force that of wind resistance on a bowling ball is very small in proportion to the downward force the feather on the other hand has a lot of surface area and not a lot of mass so the upward force due to wind resistance is pretty large in comparison to the downward force due to gravity. Okay, that's, yeah, it's like, once again, it's like, it feels like there's a, there's two different ways to look at it, you know? It's like, okay, mass cancels out um, in a vacuum, or the density is zero. <laughs> It just feels like, for me, from someone that doesn't have any background, right? Yep. It just, it looks like there's two answers. And the one, to me, that makes, it just, it's simple. You know, a uh, helium balloon is less dense, it goes up. Rock, more dense, goes down. And then, depending on the medium of density, determines how fast it rises or how fast it falls. And that makes sense to me. When I try to wrap my mind around gravity and, and, and all the forces of the planets and everything, obviously no one can actually rationally understand that in their head, right? Oh, lots I mean, of people like, do. I mean, if you assume those lots things- Lots of people do. If you yeah. assume that's all happening, it makes sense, right? <laughs> but if you don't assume it, if you're, if you're, just, if you're just off observation, uh, you know, that's just, no, I'm just trying to explain my perspective. Yeah, and what happens to a helium balloon in a vacuum? Uh, well, the density is zero, so the helium balloon is going to be, I'm guessing, slightly more dense than zero. I haven't seen an experiment like that, though. It'd be, it falls. It falls because it's more dense than zero, right? No, because it has weight. And there's no buoyancy. So, no, that's it's not wind resistance like on a feather. It's now buoyancy. Because there's buoyancy is yet another force that acts on it. you got gravity, you got wind resistance, you got buoyancy. Again, a bowling ball is buoyant in air. And the buoyancy is directly proportional to the amount that's dis, um, displaced. So the volume of the bowling ball and the density of the medium, and there's, there's where it comes in, and that's the right thing. So the density of the medium and the bowling ball's displacement. So that amount together, you multiply them together, and, and, and you also multiply in the 
uh, 9.8 meters per second squared downward acceleration, and that shows how much upward acceleration you'll have. You do the same for a helium balloon. Let's say the helium balloon's the same size as the bowling ball. It has the same displacement. But the mass of the helium balloon is drastically less than the mass of the bowling ball. So its downward force is very small in comparison to the upward force due to buoyancy. And a helium balloon, the upward force is just more than the downward force. So it'll go up in, in the air. But in a vacuum, it'll come back down. Again, that's that's the physics. And I, 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 I homeschool our kids. I'm in charge of our science curriculum. And I see this all the time. And I'm like, I, I think one of the biggest things, the biggest uh, indicators of, of possibility for a person to become a flat earther is not taking physics in high school. So I, I, I figured out, and you, you kind of, Admit it, you didn't take physics ever, right? Yeah, I've said that. Not, but... not a problem. But to replace that physics education with, well, I just think, isn't a good way to go. That's quite, I just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I think thinking is a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm just, yeah, you know, I teach, I teach music theory. I'm not a, not a physicist yeah so but you know it's just yeah it, it for me i mean that's how it seems it's like every topic i look into the the evidence on the flat earth is is simple and common sense and basic and the evidence on the heliocentric is like oh sorry you're not a physicist <laughs> exactly you know? what, what's wrong uh, with that but i mean there are people that are a lot smarter than me that that um well, i know there's stuff on this that i I've, seem to have I've, the answers <laughs> three years three years and and no flat earther has come in and appropriately applied the the basic uh this this math here right i've never seen in three years any flat earther do this and and the ones that do this all the time like nathan oakley and his 1,700 flat earth debate uh, shows, he has never once applied buoyancy properly. 1,700 videos he's done and he can't apply buoyancy. He can't apply Coriolis as is described for the, for the earth. I've heard him explain Coriolis and it made a lot of sense. <laughs> it's absolutely wrong completely okay. wrong okay I, I haven't listened to that much of him but from what i've heard it's i would it, not want to debate him. it I, it it can capture somebody that doesn't have the background because when i hear him say it i hear that he just, he says the one thing i'm like right there that's the turning point that will fool somebody that doesn't have the appropriate background in it when he says earth turning under a pendulum earth turning under a hot air balloon right okay so so um yeah could you i, I did could, okay so could i teach could i teach music theory without having studied music theory How no, good so that's, I the do? Same, that's the same thing we're dealing with right now you're like yeah you're pointing out that i, I, mean, I can't you you could <laughs> i could come along and say well that's not how a phrygian mode works Right. If I had no clue what a Phrygian mode was and started talking about whether or not Phrygian mode was the right thing to do or this particular passage is or is not in Phrygian mode, you would your head would explode. You'd say, what the hell are you talking about? You don't obviously know anything about music theory. Yeah, well, I'm just saying the only thing obviously the only thing I can do saying it's not my it's not my specialty is to compare the evidence is to compare um is to compare what one side is saying to the other side and decide which one makes more sense, which sign, which is something I can wrap my mind around. And then I go with that. And, uh, there's just, uh, there seems to be a lot on the flat earth that just really hits me like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But, uh, 
there's okay there's a uh, some other it's fun asking you because when i ask you know you don't get to you don't get to have access to someone that's this knowledgeable all right so okay i was thinking okay so another question i well, i'm in the comment section right and i'm like and i'll you know and they're like some someone brings up uh, gas pressure or whatever and i'm like okay well i i look at it I even go to Google, let's say I go to Google search and I type in, can you have, you know, what causes gas pressure? And then every single link tells you it's a container. And I'm like, okay, I assume it's a container that causes gas pressure. Okay. And then they're like, and then, you know, in the, in the comment section, then they say, oh, well, there's a difference between atmospheric pressure and gas pressure. And then I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm, I'm not an expert, <laughs> but atmosphere, I know that atmosphere is made of gas. So atmospheric pressure is, I mean, I think you could describe it as gas pressure. So that confuses me of why they would say that. All right. So the, the classic claim is, is that uh, about gas pressure without a container. So like, like we covered before, helium in, an, in a, a helium balloon in a vacuum chamber will go down. Gases go down. There is there is a, a pull down and if gas, you take I thought, i've heard that gases disperse in all directions but if you if you take a a, a chamber of any size uh, it's easier if it's taller because then you don't need as much precision in the instruments but if you measure the pressure at the bottom of the chamber and at the top of the chamber completely pressure filled right sealed on all sides the pressure at the bottom will be more than the pressure at the top there is a pressure differential between the top and bottom. So it went in all directions, but it's not equal in all directions. The top is, is lower pressure. The bottom is higher pressure. Okay. Well, right? just like the atmosphere. Exactly. So what causes that pressure differential? The downward acceleration, whatever that is, whatever causes the downward force is, uh, is what's pulling down on, on air. Uh, I would assume that the gases just eventually find their medium of density from a flat Earth perspective. Their medium of density? You mean their equilibrium? Is that not the right word? <laughs> no, medium of density doesn't really make any. Doesn't sense. apply to gases. No, I, I, I think you're just. You, there's maybe other words you should, you might be searching for, um, but they will find equilibrium, right? So in, in a in a, a sealed on all sides chamber after you put it in and you give it some time to to find its equilibrium at the bottom the pressure is higher than at the top something is pulling down on the air and and pressing down on the air from the top make right you can think of it that way so what is it it's the weight of the air above that's that's sitting and and pressing down on it so you also you could have a tube where the top is off and the pressure at the top pressure at the bottom again will be different but the pressure at the top will be the same as the pressure immediately outside of it We're very close so okay. So there, there is this differential, and this differential is caused by the downward acceleration. So in a vacuum chamber, sorry, in a, a sealed container and outside of a sealed container, there is the same phenomenon, pressure differential. So what keeps the air on the earth? The downward acceleration. Whatever it is that's pulling all of us down is what keeps the air on the earth. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, this, this is a good one. Cinnamon Control says you can measure a vertical pressure differential in your room with the cell phone barometer. Physics toolbox is a good app. And I've done this before, actually. Um, I have it in, in here. Let me see if I can. Uh, what, is, what is it called? He it says it's. it's um, physics toolbox oh where is it mm -hmm. 
I've done it before on my phone. Oh, darn it. All right, I'm not going to hunt for it right now. But on your, if you have an iPhone, uh, for sure, and probably on an Android, you can do the same thing. You can pull up the app, and you can look down here, and you can raise it up, and the pressure will actually reduce. So what's the, what's the cause of that pressure differential? It's the downward force. So it won't just go off in, in, and escape into space because there's something pulling it down. Yeah, I, I would just have to, like, so the, like, the, I mean, like, okay, so you hear that, like, helium is less dense in air than it goes up. That's what you hear from flight perspective, right? So why wouldn't that, why wouldn't that work for with other gases? Why, um, I mean, I guess that doesn't really matter because it's, you're not looking from the flat Earth perspective. It's different for different <laughs> gases, right? So if it's argon, it will go down because argon, the the buoyant force of argon is is less than the the uh, downward force of argon. Nitrogen, well, the air is the uh, air is mostly nitrogen, about eighty percent. Carbon dioxide is slightly more uh, massive than, than uh, nitrogen and oxygen. So if you had a balloon of carbon dioxide, it'll go down. If you had a balloon of helium, it goes up. A balloon of hydrogen, it goes up. If you could have a balloon of gaseous lithium, it would go up. Lithium isn't gaseous at, uh, at normal temperatures. So hmm. again, that's these are these are the things that are covered in physics classes, typically a high school physics class. Yeah, I mean, it's just my in my in my mind, it's like, yeah, it's just it seems like there's always this assumption of the heliocentric model in every single thing, and it, it, I could see how it'd be easy. There's there's no assumption that the Earth is any particular shape when you're calculating the density. Or so the buoyancy of a particular. I mean, I said like oh, assuming gravity. Like, if, I mean, if you're assuming the heliocentric model, I'm you're not, assuming gravity. I've then never in, in this whole but, conversation, I've never assumed gravity. Yeah, I've just, just said a, the downward acceleration. There is a downward acceleration. You can't deny it. Nobody denies it. No, no, no. So, so yeah. how do I know that? Like, when you have when your phone that measures pressure, how do I know it's measuring gravity, or how do I know it's measuring? It's, the fall rate of an object or the density or well, of if if you use the you barometer, know. your barometer is measuring the air pressure. And you don't need to do it on a phone. If you want, you can get an old fashioned analog barometer and do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so Okay, so the down there's some downward force that creates gas pressure, is what you're saying. Yeah, it pulls the gases towards the surface of the earth but on, on any small scale experiment we see that the container creates gas pressure but we're more it's, thinking it, of it's a, the physical container but but the downward accelerating force is also a container it contains the atmosphere. well it's interesting to me because you're saying like in a container that the there's more pressure on the bottom than the top right yeah and in the atmosphere you're saying there's more pressure on the bottom than the top yeah, the same how thing. Does that, how does that say that we don't need a container? The, like I said, the downward acceleration, whatever that is, is the container. It but pulls that... things towards it. So if you had, so so back up to to some state and or or set some some beginning state and say let's take the universe, let's take the Earth and let's have it completely devoid of everything except for the earth right now let's let's sprinkle some particles throughout the universe of air right nitrogen oxygen helium hydrogen carbon dioxide well let's sprinkle them all around and we have the earth there with with the mass of the earth that it has now well there is a an attraction towards the earth and so as the earth would would go around <laughs> this this invented uh, near near perfect vacuum that does have some particles the particles get pulled towards the earth and eventually would collect a bunch of them together and eventually form an atmosphere yeah okay 
So yeah, it just in my mind, the way I'm thinking about it is is like you have to assume oh what like your answer is pretty much you have to assume the heliocentric model in order to explain atmosphere like right. gas so, pressure. So here so here's the challenge. Atmospheric then. pressure. Explain the atmosphere with the pressure gradient without the heliocentric model, without gravity. No flat earther has ever done it. Yeah, I mean, the, my, why is my, there a my pressure average Joe thing would be like. Why is the, there a pressure difference? The yeah, so fine. there is. Here's the thing. This is the average Joe answer. There is an answer for the globe. Why is the average Joe always oh, right? <laughs> the average Joe's generally not right. But, but there is an answer for the globe. We can give you an answer for that. There is no answer for flat Earth. What causes the downward acceleration for flat Earth? There's no answer. When you, all of the explanations have been tested and don't work. What is the cause of the pressure differential? There is no answer. No flat earther has ever answered that. Uh, there's, there's What's very, the cause answer of the I've pressure heard a lot. <laughs> What? Density. Density is, is the not a force. It doesn't have a direction. Oh, well, I mean, there's other... So that's I mean, not an answer. Yeah, uh, there's other... I guess there's other theories that are out there about um, what the Earth is and other forces that might be at play, but I, I and, wouldn't even... And I every wouldn't even single one out. of them, when tested fails immediately dielectric or incoherent dielectric acceleration it, i would expect I, would ex I mean you know you know i would expect someone that's defending the globe model to say that though you know but <laughs> no flat earthers ever presented anything that passes the test of scrutiny because there's a specific uh, downward acceleration 9.8 meters per second squared about and it varies all over the earth so when you say density, density doesn't have a direction. The downward acceleration is down. And it has and, and the downward acceleration is a very specific magnitude, 9.8 meters per second squared. About. Density doesn't answer any of those. And buoyancy is the wrong direction and is reliant on the existing downward force, which is what we're asking about in the first place. So it's circular. So density doesn't do it. Uh the 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 Flat Earth Society website talks about uh, the entire plane of Earth accelerating upwards. I, it I don't want to hear about work. the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't work anyway. Right? I've heard people say, uh, I've heard uh, incoherent dielectric acceleration, or it, which, which is just words. They don't actually present anything. I've heard magnetism. Well, lead is diamagnetic. It would float, not go down. I... Um, yeah, I've, I mean, heard I've, elect yeah. I've heard I've uh, heard static electrostatics. Well, if you, you you can ground something, so if you have a wire touching the ground and a wire touching the same object, same wire touching them, then the static forces, the static charge, is equalized. They would not fall, yet things fall. So there's no there's no explanation that any flat earther has ever put forward. So I'm telling you, the globe has an answer. Flat Earth doesn't. So the average Joe answer is, well, I'm going to go with the one that has an answer in that particular case, right? The, yeah, if you assume that that, in, I mean, it, yeah, it, no, it, it's just a, but it's just like, I mean, if you, if you haven't taken the time to really question the, the heliocentric model, I could see the average Joe absolutely doing that. But if it's like if you have taken the time, then you're like, well, I'm not so sure, <laughs> because I mean, it's yeah. I you see a lot of videos that that really make you question. Like, there's that popular one where uh, where where uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson he's like, oh, we don't actually know anything about dark matter or dark energy, which makes up about eighty five percent of gravity, and he's. And you're like, well, that sounds like a problem. Yeah, and not, not gravity, the, the mass of the universe. I say. Oh, in, the, in his video, that's what he said. But um, okay, but that but, uh, doesn't. But that doesn't make the the empirical measurements of gravity go away. 
Yeah, I'm just saying that. It, oh, and there's uh, okay. The one, the one that's really got me to question the whole solar system model is when well, some people like, I've seen in the comments, and someone mentions the three body problem, and I'm like, okay, that's interesting. What's that? Oh, it's like, oh, okay. Well, with you know, we can't we can predict when there's two celestial bodies, we can predict their movement. But as soon as we add a third celestial body, we can only predict the next 10 minutes of movement. That's not right, though. And I'm like, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard yeah. about it. Now, you not having the background in this can't appropriately evaluate the, the, this, how this is done, right? Any more than somebody that doesn't know what Phrygian mode is could determine whether or not a particular song is in Phrygian mode, right? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, it's just a question. Okay. I don't. So, I haven't heard anyone so explain the three-body problem. Cannot be solved in a particular manner, which makes it easy. But it can be solved in different manners, which are more difficult. How about that? It's an answer, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I. I can't get into it. I can't, what, what, well, I can't talk like, about it in 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 any more detail. Than, yeah. Than that in in this. It's just interesting to me when well, like when the developers are like, "Well, we can predict the movement of eclipses and blah blah blah," and I'm like, and, "Well, you, and we do." I mean, yes, you do, but yeah. are you using the solar system model? Yes. Apparently, you're not because of the three body problem. No, it's been solved in a different manner. This book right here predicts the next uh the eclipses up to 2030 and, I've and heard, there's uh, there's there's uh i think six six volumes of this particular book going forward through the end of the century okay but if they can't predict more than three celestial bodies then they're using some they other... can predict more than three celestial but, bodies they but just that, can't do it as the three body problem that can't be solved it can be solved, but not with one particular method. The, the easy method. They can't do it the easy way. They have to do it the hard way. The way that can't be explained to the average person. <laughs> yes. The, Which, the it, easy it way. seems to be the answer for everything. A, average Joe, the easy way can't well, be why described would the to the Joe average person. assume the heliocentric model then if nothing of it can be explained to him? It you can know? be. It it doesn't. Your inability to understand something doesn't make something true or not. Right? There are lots of things I don't understand, but that doesn't make them accurate or not. Well, if I don't understand it, it can still be the case. Yeah, it just seems like. Yeah, it just seems a little out there. I cannot <laughs> write a a passage in Phrygian mode. Does that mean? That it's not possible to play something or write something in Phrygian mode. Yeah, well, my no, my... it's not. It's, it, come on, answer the question. No, is it possible? Is it still possible just because I can't do it? My question. Oh no, like okay, no, that that, that no, no, you're right, you're okay. right. But okay, at the same time, if I'm if someone plays a G major, and they ask me why is that a G major. Yeah, I can give them the most simple possible fucking answer you can imagine that they can see for themselves, apply for themselves, and understand even without any music background. I can tell them that the, there's three notes that make that chord, and you are putting your fingers on them. Yeah, you know when it, what, that's how it is for me when I'm coming to a place of understanding it. It just seems like when there's no simple explanation for so many of these questions that makes me think it's all science fiction so i need to be simple <laughs> i've given you i've given you plenty i know of, i'll go over high, these. high school answers i'll this go over high these school. things i i want to learn more and, I'm, and, I'm and, and you can and you can out music a high schooler if you if you're teaching high uh, teach, teaching music right yeah no i just uh yeah <laughs> I'm just trying can, to explain why there's so many flat earthers. <laughs> can can the circuits can the circuits that make Scott's computer log onto the internet be explained to the average Joe? Can you explain to me how how the memory in your your uh, 
solid state hard drive works if i had a background in that i bet i can explain it really simply uh, but the average joe can't get it the average no, joe isn't going to understand the quantum someone tunneling that understands that and can explain it <laughs> uh-huh yeah but but simple. you're not going to understand it even if even if it were explained to you you're not going to understand didn't, the quantum didn't, einstein, that's happening. didn't einstein say that if you can't explain or someone some heliocentric role model <laughs> Of course, it's it's, yeah, it's just a, it's just a great it's it's a it. nice it's a nice idea that if you can't exp something about if you can't explain it to a, a certain age person then you don't understand it well that's a nice idea but it's not actually true I I cannot explain how how a quantum tunneling works to a good degree to a person that's that's a, a five year old I can give the five year old answer to it and the five year old answer to the the three body problem is the three body problem cannot be solved the easy way, but there are many other ways that are much more difficult. Yeah, it's just it's something that stood out to me that as a big problem. Um, and if there's yeah. Um, okay, uh, we can move on to another topic if you're, if you're ready. Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess we could talk about, okay, so just a basic question okay, about angles that I hear all the time. Um, so it's like when you're using uh, a sextant or you're trying to acquire an angle to a star um, that you, you know, is it, it's correct that you assume a, a artificial horizon or a, a, what's the other word for it? There's another word for it. There's, I think there's multiple words for it, but if there's like, you know, it's an angle. So there's two flat, there's two straight lines, or we're looking, we're assuming a flat, a flat surface. We're a flat, we're assuming a flat baseline, right? No. Um, that step is one, I step one of celestial navigation is assume that the earth is a globe. That's step one with a particular radius. We assume, okay, that's an assumption. But we're using a flat line. No, we're not using a flat surface. We're using a straight line from the eye to the edge of the horizon and the eye to the star. But that doesn't, but that straight line from the eye to the edge of the horizon does not say anything about the shape of the surface between or underneath you, underneath that line. It only talks about that particular line. Yeah, I mean, that's that is something that. I mean, it's just a, yeah. It's just some some one other things I just haven't really heard. I have I have a nice uh, a, how it actually works. Make sure it's right. Yeah. So yeah, we we do not. It is not us first start with a uh, a flat baseline as as they say. We start with a not flat baseline. But it, it doesn't matter. The, the shape of the line underneath doesn't have a, a direct impact. So, all right. It's this. Oh, yeah, so, you get the, so you're at the height of the observer, and you're the heart of that horizon is a straight line. Yeah, so, so you see that there's a curve of the Earth from below the eye height I see where, there's to where the edge of the, the line of as, sight touches. As you said earlier, there's the assumption of curvature. <laughs> yeah. And the proof's in the pudding. If it works, it works. And the assumptions are correct. So I, yeah, or it, it so suggests to you that the assumptions are correct. So you, you, you take, and this is greatly exaggerated, that, that amount of dip is is more than you would see in in most cases but you take that dip to the horizon that's angle c but but you're, you're c. not taking the dip to the horizon in angle c you're taking you're only taking it in angle in a right yeah you measure angle a well, you, you're not you're not taking the dip to the physical horizon you're only taking it to the artificial horizon to the, c. Uh, the visual horizon all yeah you, all you have is what you see we, you can't with a sextant measure the physical 
anything because you can only measure optical things with the, with the sextant. But, okay. Right? So, yeah. so you, you measure angle A. That's what you measure. But you're interested in angle B. I'm actually more interested in angle... Uh... Oh, okay. You're saying you're interested when, in angle B. When you're doing celestial navigation, you're interested in angle B. But, okay. but angles, but so you, you subtract angle C. Now, usually it's very small. If, if you are 10 feet above the surface of the water, you're, you're talking just a couple arc seconds that you're going to subtract off. So it's not going to make a big difference. And and if and if your accuracy isn't super important, say you only want to get within twenty five nautical miles, then you would not even need to to take the dip of the horizon into account. But if you want your accuracy, if you want to be accurate to one nautical mile, say, well then you're going to do all of the things that you can to take that uh, every possible variation into play. All right. So once you once you get though. Uh, angle B, then then you have right here, you see this extra line that showed up here? So there's without, there's with. That is, and I didn't label it, but that's the that's the GP of the star is is where that touches the surface of the earth, the, the geographical position of the star. Okay. So you see there is there is no part of the earth that is flat in this particular usage and since uh -oh. you know the angle when you when you have that particular angle b it tells you how far you are from the gp yeah really my only question is like so what your the horizon angle the artificial horizon um it just seems interesting to me that it's like i listen to people talk about this or even like even you talk about it and you're like well, you know, according to this study, when we did all these calculations based off the angle, we realized that the Earth isn't flat based off the, you know, based off the, these measurements and so forth. But what's interesting to me, like, it's the only point is like, well, in every single situation, you are assuming a flat Earth. No, it's never assumed. You assume that the I mean, Earth you, is no, no, you're, not, you're not assuming. You are literally using a flat level Earth to well, make your, to make your angle. No, uh, no, no, no. Nowhere in celestial navigation are you using flat Earth. Where? where? Your, your horizon is a flat level plane, right? No. I, look at that angle there. Look at the angle labeled horizon. It's a dip. I mean, but how are you, like, for C, like, if you try to measure the dip, you're not measuring it actual to the physical horizon. You're not actually measuring it to your globe. You're measuring it to the flat horizon. No. You're measuring it to the visible horizon, which is a dip below 90 degrees zenith. It's less than 90 zenith, or lower than 90. So it's actually a larger number. It's below Isla. I wish I knew more on this topic because it just seems like so. So it, at no time in celestial navigation are you assuming any flatness of the Earth. You are always assuming from the beginning that the Earth is a sphere. You're when assuming you measure, it's here, and when you measure the angle, it's a flat baseline. No, it's not. Where, where's I see the flat? It right now? <laughs> which 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 line is is flat? From the height of the, its horizon going down to the left. Uh, yes. Okay. So so that's just the line of sight. That does does the line of sight change the shape of the Earth? It's just like you're. Hold on. No, just answer the question. Does the line of sight change the shape of the Earth? No. Okay. This, on this picture, in this diagram, it's still a sphere. Even though there's a straight line from the eye to the edge of the horizon, the shape of the Earth is still a sphere, right? If I mean, if you're assuming it is, but if you're assuming it's a flat level plane, then it works the same. Actually, it doesn't, because if you're assuming that it's a flat level plane, number one, you would never in, expect a dip of the horizon that 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 line b there that's what you would always see you'd always see that because it would just be going off indefinitely far so there'd never be a dip of the horizon that that would uh, that would be much it'd be um, 
a large amount. Right now, if if you go with the the disk floating in space and beyond the 90 degrees south, there is nothing, then there would be a very slight dip, less than one tenth of a degree. Uh, probably, I think it's less than one hundredth of a degree. But if you're if you're of the persuasion that the Earth continues, which is the more popular trend these days that just keeps on going, then then effectively there would be exactly zero dip because it keeps going indefinitely. Mm. So if the Earth were flat, then celestial navigation would, number one, be different right there because you'd never subtract off the dip of uh, the horizon. You'd, you'd never do that. Then you wouldn't, you wouldn't use the... Uh, the trilateration, you probably would use a different method to get your position. But we use trilateration. I can show you how that's done. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I... Here, look, this is... I'm just not seeing how, how if you're... If the angle is a flat baseline, how is that... How is that a curve? You know, when does the flat line start curving and why do you get to ignore that? It's like you get to have it both. When ways. does when does what flat line? There is no the flat line. That's... The horizon. But there is no flat line. There's no flat baseline that we're using. I see it right now. <laughs> but we're not using it. Assuming a flat line. We're not using that curve. What, what, what flat line are you talking about? The, 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 the tangent same plane? I, I just... The tangent plane is an imaginary thing. If you say it's imaginary, then yeah, I guess. <laughs> right? Now, now, here, this is how celestial navigation actually works. Right? You see that? These, these are just some example numbers here. So these two dots here are, are the, the GPs of the, of the two stars. You can see we've got Arcturus there, we've got the time, and then we've got 48 degrees. And then you got Regulus, and you've got the time, and you've got 30, uh, 53 degrees. I can show you what that looks like on a globe. You can see the two points of intersection right there. So here's what it looks like on a globe. Right, This, this little cone thing here is the GP of, of one of the stars. And this cone here is the GP of the other star. And you can see they intersect at one particular point here. They actually intersect at two points. Here's the other point. So if you only get if you only measure the angle to two stars, you have two possible solutions. Now, if you have a good uh, uh, rough estimate of where you are, say say you were on the water and you measured these, well, you can be certain that this is not where you're at because that's in the middle of the, the ground. You say, well, I know that I'm here. This is definitely where I am. I was on the water, and hey, I was in in the Pacific Ocean near South America. Hey, awesome. That works. That's about right. That's how it actually, that's how celestial navigation actually works. You draw these three circles. Or two circles in this case. Yeah, I, I mean, I would just, yeah, and it's so, good. I mean, so you I'm see just... how, how none of this uses, uses anything about flat Earth. I, I see that. That's exactly yeah. the problem. <laughs> and, but, but the problem is it works. And what doesn't work is no flat earther has ever gotten it to work. Ever. Now, uh, for, for flat earth. Now, I can show you here. This is this is a measurement I took myself in February. Right there. I'll give you the 3D view. This was in northern Minnesota. Central. Right there. That's where I was. Using this, it was within about six miles of my location. And no flat earther got it. And I can do this one here. So I have a I have a ten thousand dollar challenge to flat earthers to do celestial navigation. So using a <laughs> Using the actual measurements. Using a flat level. Yeah, straight and, and nobody can do it. Because it's already straight. <laughs> it's already level. 
No. Here are I mean, the three measurements. You're showing me the model of how it would work on the ball, it, but... Yeah, and nobody can make it happen on flat Earth. So here's Regulus, Arcturus, and Doobie. That those three star measurements give this particular location. And it's correct. And I can show you what it looks like on the globe. And no flat earther in four months has stepped forward to, to earn that $10,000. Because you need to draw, and the real celestial navigation draws circles of equal altitude. That's what these are. And they only work on a sphere. If you look at it, if you were to try to do it on a flat earth, they aren't even, they aren't even circles. There's what it looks like if you were to draw it on the AE map. Those are not circles. It doesn't work. If you were to draw circles instead of these misshapen things, they won't intersect in the right spot. It doesn't work. So $10,000 to any flat earther that can do it, I already have the money in escrow. And nothing. Why These flat earth experts that are out there every day for a year declaring proudly that celestial navigation works how they think but they couldn't do it i know why because this is how celestial navigation actually works so you step one of science you guess at something you have a hypothesis the earth is a sphere with a particular radius now let's do some celestial navigation to test that claim hey look at that it worked we we got us our our location right the hypothesis is confirmed So, I did have one flat earther try. He, uh, but he had to use the globe. <laughs> he actually, he actually drew out the lines of, of the cir the circles of equal altitude. That's what these things are. He drew them out on a globe using Google Earth, and he used distances based on the radius of the Earth. So he kind of used a globe to try to win the challenge. <laughs> Room 237 says you should be getting underpaid for this like te real teachers do. Uh, nah. <laughs> do you mind some questions from the audience? Let's go for it. Right. Uh, Mr. QTube, first name Fa, says his argument is basic. Nah. -uh. I think the average <laughs> Joe came in a little more. Uh, Ella Bacchus says quick basic fact that mountain doesn't look the same every day. None of those examples do. Why? Direct exactly. index of refraction. Cool, huh? Yeah, this was back in our first topic here. Uh, is Brian Leak in the chat? Robert Gillis. Brian Leak, why didn't you get your payday from MC2? Uh, so somebody, for reference, some people have claimed that Brian Leak uh, actually won it. I mean, he didn't, and he does not contend that. I sent him an email asking, and he's like, no, I, he didn't win it. I have the email. If anybody wonders, gladly show you the email directly from Brian saying he did not win. Um, many Karen from Israel says, uh, for 15 shekels says he's not going to just shout. No, no. I predict a very short career in flat earth for this guy. Hey, that'd be good. No, got high hopes for that science fiction perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Tully. Oh, like, like, even like, okay. So even let's like, let's take it back from the beginning. Okay. So just like. Imagine someone is an adult and they know nothing about fucking anything. Okay. And someone comes up to them and, and they're like, okay, everything came from nothing. Big explosion. You're like, okay. Uh, and, and during this big explosion, all these gases started to form together and they, they started you know, and in, in, in this this vacuum, all these gases started burning, which is interesting. And then they, throughout they, all they, this, they didn't start burning. That's not the thing. Not a thing. Okay. 
Well, then, so all this forma formations of planets and moons and all this happens. And then you're like, okay, so we have Earth. And then inanimate matter, inanimate matter forms life. Okay, so all of a sudden we have everything coming from nothing. Uh, no one can ever prove that. Inanimate matter creating life. Nobody can ever prove that. And then our ancestors are you know, some mutated fish that became reptiles. And you live on a ball that's spinning at 1,000 miles per hour, orbiting the sun at 66,000 miles per hour, being pulled by yeah, the sun. We've all, we've, all heard, we've all heard the mantra. Expanding at 670 million miles per hour. You can't feel it. You have why to assume would, it. Why would you feel it? Unless you're... It's not, oh, it's, you should not feel it. And it's not assumed, it's measured. <laughs> Measure you're just repeating, Scott. Assumption. You're just repeating your mantra. Stop repeating the mantra and actually do the science. I'm just. It's just logical. It's, it's no, just crazy. It's, it's actually what, not what logical at all. People to believe is in is the definition of like ludicrous in science what, fiction. What you are doing is called incredulity. You don't believe it. You don't understand it. Therefore, fake. That's not how it actually works. No, all no, of these based, things. It's based off like basic observation, yeah. like. Like Scott, every single thing has an explanation for the globe, and none of these have an explanation for flat Earth when you actually test them using real physics, which you don't know, so you're not equipped to do, and that's fine. And, but yeah, you no. should ask somebody who is equipped to do it. Yes, and that, that's, exactly, that's exactly and, what I just and, did. And I'll tell you, there are exactly zero flat earthers that I've ever spoken to. And this is this is live stream number 300 and something. 304. Um, I've never had a flat earther that actually has the physics understanding to actually test these things. It's just like, okay, so just like you said, you have to ask someone that does know, okay? And the average Joe questioning someone who defends the globe i've watched your videos you you really know your shit right so and i so we, we talk about seeing too far and you you know seeing a mountain too far you claim it's not really there due to refraction i say it's so, really there and you can see it due to due to refraction yes it is there and then oh so why don't we need a container for gas pressure we do have a container um, the downward oh, acceleration the, is a container. We, we assume the heliocentric model, so it's no big no, deal. There's no assumption of, of uh, the, the shape of the Earth there. You assume gravity. No. So don't there is, I didn't assume the, the, the cause. I, uh, all I did was identify that there is a downward acceleration. We can test this without knowing that it's called gravity, without knowing anything about it. We can yeah, just we can observe determine that there is a downward acceleration. Fall rate. That doesn't mean anything. That how does that yeah. prove the heliocentric model? It doesn't. It's an independent of, of it's one part, one facet of it. And it explains the question you have, which, by the way, doesn't have an explanation on flat Earth. The explanation is that we do have a container. No. You don't ex you only explain one facet of it. You flat Earth doesn't explain the differential in pressure. There is no explanation that any flat earther has ever, ever given for the differential in pressure. No, it's, it's All of the videos lot. that you've watched, who explained the pressure difference? Nobody. I've watched all the same ones you have. The pressure difference. Like Why a density there, column. Inside a sealed container, why is there a pressure difference between the top and the bottom? Uh, well, the globe I mean, has an answer, and no flat earther theory, yet has presented an answer to that. The globe has a theory based off a of wild assumption. It's not wild assumptions, it's measurements. All right, I only have one, mm, one, one none more question. Of, I, 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 I need to really press this to you. These things are not wild assumptions. None of the things about the globe 
are assumptions. The if things I, about the globe are measured. You, you, during the process of science, you do make an assumption. That's how you build your hypothesis. Then you go through and you test it. And if at the end, you, it confirms it, then your assumption at the beginning has been empirically confirmed. Do it over and over and over again in different circumstances, in different ways. And now you've confirmed it really well. And you can graduate that collection of hypotheses into what's called a scientific theory. Well, yeah, it's like, I mean, just based off observation, it's... All of the things you've talked about have no explanation for flat Earth. And every one of them has a, an explanation based on measurements and real empirical science for the globe. I, I, I need to really stress that. These are not wild assumptions. Well, there's like, that, that's just thing I have to take, I have to have faith that that's the truth, right? You, you, at some point there's you do. There's nothing I can because, look at for because you Because Scott, that. because Scott, you did not get the background so that you could, you could do it yourself. You have to go to somebody that understands these topics. Okay. Right. And, and if you want a bunch of people in here have said you could come to my discord server and i know you said you didn't do discord but uh it's kind of a cesspool in, in some of them and and people would be glad to explain it to you but it, it you, you have to learn you have to learn these things and since you didn't take the physics courses then it, it's going to be a challenge for you because you don't have that background and that's fine so I you, feel like you it's going to be a challenge need. because I question it, not because it's hard to understand. It's because you've been... You've, that, that's because every time I see an assumption... Oh, shoot. It's You're not broken. assumptions. And they're all based on other things. There's there's a long line of things, right? So so when when celestial navigation was... was when people made celestial navigation... It was based on the Earth being a globe, not because they assumed it was a globe, but because the globe had been figured out previously. According to... In people. other ways, for thousands of years. Yeah. Aristotle, uh, uh, Euclid. Thousands of years ago, people figured out the Earth is a globe and have written about it. And you can look at historical documents for more than 2,000 years and see that. I have a book, um, Inventing the Flat Earth. Columbus didn't think that the Earth was flat, and no people did at the time in general. Some might have, but... Uh, and th that particular book goes through the history of people uh, addressing the shape of the Earth being a globe. And it goes back well over 2,000 years in, in more than just a few spots. So, okay. to, to create celestial navigation techniques based on the earth being a globe isn't a wild assumption it's something that was well established i would say well <laughs> it's a very established theory and uh, so oh i got theory. a little guinea pig this is my this is my guinea pig my kid likes to show off the guinea pig the cat he, yeah. he's a flat earther he just hasn't told you yet he's embarrassed well he's yeah he didn't take <laughs> physics either <laughs> This is Jamil spelled D apostrophe J M E A L. Jamil. There you go. Like Django Unchained. There he is. He's he, give us some squeaks. No? All right. There you go. A little fall. All right. <sighs> yeah. Well. Um... Um, all right. So so I, we've got some more questions. We got kind of off track there. But somebody said to show you Blackpool Tower. Have you seen that one? That was the one that Ranty showed. All right, wait a second. Show it to you. Now, as a problem, when you look for evidence that of the globe, you just get told that you're retarded, and it doesn't really help. The situation. Have I said that once? No, no. Okay. I'm just saying like random so, music. So here, video. here is here is Blackpool Tower. This is in England, and behind it are mountains. Yeah. Now, I'm not. I'm not going to do the analysis of it right here. But uh, when you calculate perspective, assuming flat Earth, then this mountain here that's right next to the tower must be significantly higher. Higher? 
Yeah, when you when you apply perspective, like I said, that it's just solving triangles. Perspective is just solving triangles, right? So, is this the, is this the Tower of Man, or is that the same one? Nope, this is Blackpool Tower, which is in Blackpool, in England, and I don't know the mountains behind it, but when you apply perspective and assume the earth to be flat, then that mountain must be significantly higher than the tower, a good deal higher. And when you then assume that the earth is a sphere with a particular radius and apply perspective, then we predict that the mountain will be lower. Which one matches the prediction? The globe matches the prediction and flat earth does not. And no flat earther has actually applied perspective and come up with this is what it should look like. So there's Blackpool Tower. That was that was the particular one that Ranty that I mentioned earlier. That Ranty analyzed and said I, I, he could not see how it worked for flat Earth and gave up flat Earth and uh, has moved on and has experienced some really good success. In uh, he did he first started some. A YouTube channel. He was a YouTuber before. He gave away his channel, and uh, has experienced some success in non-Earth-shaped uh, topics. He did some stuff with uh, the Johnny Depp trial. That had a good fun time with that. Johnny Depp. Um, I, I didn't watch that much. All right, Jiffy Cohen says all MC Tunes thirty-three kids are six point six six years old. Uh oh. Yeah, I have 33 <laughs> kids, apparently. 17 boys and 17 girls. That's Truth Nerds says for 199, Scott, could you explain the medium of density? That was a little fun That's phrase. a very easy explanation. <laughs> density is not a medium. It's a, it's a property of matter. Um, and here, here's a good one. Um... From K Kalina's agility partner, scientific theory, like music theory, is a fact. Theory is not a fact, actually. A music theory is not a fact. It's just a guideline for people to go off of. That's it. How, how, many, how many notes are in a scale? How many notes are in a sphere? A scale. Oh, this is a scale. <laughs> uh, seven. And is that a fact? Um, I mean, if that's the way you think about it, yeah. Yeah. So music theory is a fact. It's really not. And, Go and, play. and how? And how? According to music theory, how do you construct a G major chord? There's based off three notes. Yeah, first, third, fifth. First, third, and fifth. It creates yeah. a G major. Chord. And that's a fact. Yeah, but at the same time, so like, let's say, like the chord progression formula. Uh, if you apply it to a scale, um, there's chords that don't apply to that formula that actually work perfectly. So that work perfectly, like like there's a formula that you can apply to get the basic major minor chords in a certain key in a certain yeah. scale, and but you, there's certain chords that you can add into that that aren't in according to the theory that make perfect sense that will sound really good. So I mean it's not it's not exact. It's not. Are there names like like there's names for these other chords, right? Yeah, and they yeah. shouldn't be. Which is part of chords. music theory. That's all right though. And and somebody somebody uh, had a, a noted that that there aren't necessarily seven notes in a scale that different yeah, sharps and flats. So yeah, it's all perspective. Well, yeah, the, no, no, no. <laughs> that there there are there are music <laughs> theories. It's that have all more than back. seven uh, whole notes. Uh, I example, mean, I, right? I mean, I'll just tell you my like quickly. Like, I just feel like this. This there's a certain there's like a ladder of steps that you can climb that you can climb on the on breaking free of what everyone else is thinking. And when you get to a certain point, you just you just question everything because you want to think about it yourself. Yeah, but not music theory. Including, uh, yeah, including music theory. You can still think about it differently. There's people that don't go off the major scale, and that's crazy. 99, like, 
or if you like that's some jazz musicians like to go crazy and fiddle around with that. what i'm trying to say is is like there's things that you think you understand about something like people think they understand the like you know the, the, the mainstream media will tell you like oh don't I don't know. there's lots of things there's so many things like oh don't you know don't uh all right that has nothing to do with it is every physicist in history lying or just dumb no triple, it's not that triple croquet is asking um, that because because that's what you're saying no, you're, you're saying you're saying that every physicist in history is is either lying or dumb because because you I'm don't like it. you don't like how they how they do things and you disagree with them therefore they must be either lying or dumb no i'm a, they are assuming something that they've been told since they were so children the, so they're lying into what saying, they're doing so you're saying they're dumb no and that well no, of, course, not, of course you are you're saying that that when when a physicist does they, uh, they're applies, applies centrifugal force and the downward acceleration due to gravity that they are dumb because they're wrong and there's something else that you know that is the right way no i'm saying they're you observing, can't present it and no other flat earther has ever presented they're observing it. the fall rate of an object yeah and they're attaching the name gravity to it okay that doesn't and? make them dumb because they were they were taught to assume that they're not that make they weren't dumb. taught to assume that they were shown unlike you because they took the physics class how it came to be that gravity it, mass attracting mass gravity is what it is because they looked at how these things were confirmed you haven't and because because you don't know what they actually went through you're filling in the gaps with well they were just told it. they weren't just told it part of a higher education in in music and in physics is actually testing things and applying things for yourself so for example i would i'd figure that while you were in school for music you were told that you should write your own music right what? did did you write your own music as part of your schooling uh, i mean that's that yeah that's a part yeah, of, of course and a physicist as part of their schooling was told to construct their own experiments same thing you see and so they weren't just assuming they they were then testing out these exact things to see if they're correct yeah that's i mean that's the real question is if they were testing them out without yeah, the yeah. assumption and, of what and and you not having not having taken the physics background in university level at not having gotten a bachelor's or a master's or a phd in physics and then saying that somebody that has a phd in physics is just assuming things from when they were born without knowing how they actually got to the position they're in is a little bit insulting to them it, it could be seen like that if, it if they... definitely is seen like that because if you actually had or if any flat earther actually had a real substantive substantial argument to say well we think that this is wrong and here is the actual application of physics where it was wrong well that would be a, a fantastic thing to be presented but nobody's ever done that when i when i debated uh when i debate flat earthers on the topic of gravity they never present the actual thing that they think is causing the 9.8 meters per second squared downward acceleration they just say nah -uh, to gravity without actually analyzing the details of the different experiments that were done to measure the mass to mass attraction between objects now, you've you... not ever looked at torsion bar experiments to see whether or not they're actually done appropriately or what errors they might have had right right well okay here's here is an example i would use for that like well, like, let's say someone goes to college and they get a degree in nutrition and they're and they know everything about food and nutrition okay okay and someone else decides to not listen to whatever those people are saying and they're really struggling with their health right let's say for me i had a i had a really bad chronic headache for years okay 
and I was, I could barely function, right? I, it sucked balls. It sucked so hard. And I just, and then like, so when you're in that, in that situation, you're desperate for the truth. You don't give a shit what people assume or about their egos or about what they claim or what the system says. You just want an answer to your problem. You want this, this, you know, this horrible problem to go away. Then you, you are willing to look outside of the system. Okay. And so that's exactly what I did. And I found someone, he's like, Hey, just take us, take a vacation from eating food. And I did a 39 day juice fast and I cured my chronic headache and it's never come back after years. And I eat more raw fruits and vegetables now. And that's not what the mainstream will tell you. So it's not like, it's not like the people that believe that are stupid or they're unintelligent. It's just that, that is their, that's their reality. And, and until you're in a situation where you're willing to qu really question it and really willing to like be like fuck all everything what everyone's saying i just want the truth then you find okay, the truth so 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 you actually tried something and applied yeah it. and i experienced and it found, for myself and, found and i know for okay. myself Excellent. That, so that so now so now th this is what i i then ask for you and all other flat earthers if it is not mass attracting mass find the error in the torsion balance experiments and I can give you a list of them, mc2.net slash g. There's 18 of them there. Find the errors in all 18 of them, and then produce the, the correct answer that you think it is, right? Do the juice, the juice fast, the 39-day juice fast version of here is the actual tested thing that's causing the downward acceleration. They never do that. And I know why, because as soon as you try, you run into walls because nothing works. It's very so, possible. So, I, I do so want a, a to juice fast that. is drastically different because there's so many more things going on. You can't isolate in biology. You, you I mean, you like can yeah. in a in a a torsion bar. Yeah, I mean, I already see in the fast like oh juice fasting. That's fucking stupid. I'm telling you, if you're struggling with your health, if you keep on eating heavy fucking foods that you can't digest, you're not going to get any fucking better. And what happens on a juice fast is you you have a solid fucking bowel movements and you eliminate shit all the fucking time. Your colon is backed up, your digestive right, tract right, is backed right, up, and you're sick it. because you're eating McDonald's and fucking garbage shit. And you have to get off that. I'm just saying. And right. you really want and you can watch and you can sit back and watch your health transform like right. day and night. And and certainly and, uh, people like saying, oh, I do want to look into it farther too. Like people I, on many different diets have had different experiences topic of this particular one yeah but it's it's really plain and simple until you know, like if you actually experience it yourself you know that you are literally full of shit because you're eating foods that you can't digest and you fucking shit it out when you're just drinking juice so it's pretty straightforward all right uh i got a few more things here uh if you don't mind back luck here aaron webster says well it's not a question typical flirt if i don't understand there for flat and then we've got Al Marju for five dollars says buoyancy. It's like putting pebbles on a cup of water. Pebbles go down while water goes up. Except you have more pep more water than pebbles versus balloon and air. Yeah, that's uh, when you when you take a glass and you and there's a the water is at a certain height and you put some pebbles in it. The water height goes up as you put in more pebbles. That's buoyancy. The water is more buoyant than the rocks. I agree. <laughs> is did gravity stop working for that water? No, it didn't. It pulls harder on the rocks than on the water. The mass of the objects you dropped down pushed up the liquid. It displaced it. All right. Uh, Tim Pryor says, "Here's one thing: if you admit you're not expert, then you should stop and not have an opinion on what you th what you think how things should be." Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why you want to look at it. Just only appeal to the experts that will tell you what to think, right? You have an opportunity to learn it. It's free to learn. No, I, I'm, I, I, I'm honestly, like, I, I know. I could, I, 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 on my own, because I was curious, because I like dream theater, I wanted to know what Phrygian mode was. So I went and learned about Phrygian mode. If it wasn't for dream theater, I wouldn't know about Phrygian. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very skeptical. Like, even though I can see a shit ton of videos of people like seeing things too far, I still want to go get my, like, get my own camera and do it myself. 
um, and just test it out. Just know, like, okay, yeah, that's a fact. We can see too far. Hey, and what, then somebody's wondering, what's in? What's this drink you're drinking here? When you're doing it, this is not good. You should not be drinking this. <laughs> but th- I'm only able to drink this. If I drank this a couple of years ago, I'd get a fucking headache. I wouldn't even be able to drink it. But because I let me let me drink my my health drink right here, just a second. (laughs) But uh, if you if you do do a juice fast, it's just like four to six liters a day of orange juice, watermelon juice, apple juice. How many how many cans of tab? Tab? What is tab? I don't even know what that is. This is tab right here. Is it a soda? Yeah. I have lots of open tabs. Open tabs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Um, Ian Dust says, I think uh, one of the reasons Flat Earth is appealing to some is that it relies on overly simple and incorrect explanations rather than the full but complicated answer. I think we've Why seen that today. Why is it got to be complicated? <laughs> the universe is under no, no obligation to be uncomplicated to you. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it, it's it's just the simple, way things work is the way things work. It's just simple observations. Or not. And simple observations exactly are wrong. When you have the simple incorrect explanation. <laughs> when you have the incorrect explanation. The complicated so, one is is potentially the right one. And and not knowing, not analyzing, not testing the complicated one, and only going with the simple one. <coughs> isn't how you actually do science. It's not how you figure things out. I know. I, I would agree that sometimes there's a leap of faith involved and you actually have to really fucking do it. Um, so I, I say definitely there's, there's no leap of faith involved. That's, that's the thing about science. Um, <laughs> Earthrise says, what is the relative minor of G and when is a force not relative? G? I can answer. I can answer both. Can you, what is the minor? Relative minor of G. E minor. E minor? Wait, hold on. Wait, it should be E minor. I don't know. (laughs) I know a major is 135. Minor is a... I don't know. You can make... A lot of minors. E minor, I mean, G minor and E minor are the, are the same thing. They're the same thing? The same key, same scale, same everything. But shifted to half an octave? I mean, you, you can play the chords in a different way, but they're the same thing. Okay. And when is a force not relative? When there's no force. Oh, I know when there's... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you can assume there's gravity, or you can like try to figure out what else it might be. It's not an assumption. There is something that pulls things down. Well, I mean, there, there's a lot of theories out there, but I, I don't know. I, know. I know that the Earth gives off a negative charge. The atmosphere gives off a positive charge. And I tested that already. Like I said, if you simply attach a wire between the, the earth and the object, they will be at the same electrical potential. And you apply Coulomb's law and you'll get a force of zero, yet things still fall. It's not directly proportional to force or uh, to charge. Right? Y- you don't know Coul- Coulomb's law. I do. I can test that. Right? Yeah, but so, so, so it, for you, not for question. you to put forward that idea without having done your own research on it shows a lot, right? You should say, "Well, I okay, I can't do that because I don't know enough." That's true. I'm gonna That's have exactly to go with somebody that understands the physics of it, somebody that can actually apply the test. Yeah, electrostatic well, there, doesn't there's work. Multiple, there's multiple people that claim that. And then who not, do I listen to? The people that are making sense to the average Joe or the people that are not making sense to the I would Joe. say you definitely would not necessarily go with the average Joe answer. Right? You'd want to go with the person. <laughs> you'd want to go with the person 
that has a history of understanding physics <laughs> and that has a background in the topic enough that to, that you know that they're going to be able to do it but you could go to somebody that has it, it really it's only high school physics you need to go through oh it's it's true i i wish i knew more i i probably will look try to figure it out eventually um, all right mr e-man for $9.81 Australian dollars, says a vacuum will not impart infinite energy par to particle for that particle to zoom off into an infinity of space. Yeah, it... it, it yeah, uh, a vacuum does not actually uh, apply any energy to a particle. It's a lack of energy. It's a lack of, of pressure is a perfect vacuum. There's no perfect vacuum. There's always some. So in outer space, if there's no pressure, you know, how does that create suns and everything? It's not about pressure. It's about gravity. When you have a large number of particles in the same vicinity, they'll start to coalesce. And when they coalesce together into enough, enough of them coalesce together, then, then you can get a sun because the the, the pressure inside, it does create pressure when it's together, will, will be strong enough and the, the uh, nuclei of the helium atoms will get close enough, sorry, the hydrogen atoms will get close enough to fuse. That's fusion. That's what a star is. It's not a fire. It's fusion. Right? Uh, Alright. Jiffy Cones says, container... I hardly know her. Do you have a Don't drum set? Do you, do you have a drum set? You could do the uh, the, the bad joke thing. Um, okay, many Karen says musical scales don't really exist. If he says they do, isn't that exactly what he, you'd expect a music teacher to say? That's true. I mean, I teach music theory, the basics, but. I mean, there is the possibility that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but yeah, it all does seem to... There's no such thing as musical scales, but somehow it all works. Seems that your hypothesis might work. It, it's when, confirmed. When observed by direct experience, right? Yes, and that's what physicists do. Tim Pryor says, millions of people have jobs depending on gravity's existence, so denying it is just dumb. Depending on the fall rate of an object. <laughs> yeah, it's just dumb to begin with, says millions of people whose job to depend on it. Depend I mean, on. An, an architect who's designing a building that would uh, that would not accept 9.8 meters per second squared gravity would not be employed for very long. They would also not be employed if they assumed curvature. <laughs> Certainly they, they would. Leaning Tower of Pisa kind of thing. <laughs> no, not at all. You, you'd have it perpendicular to the just perfectly use, level yeah how, how much does level curve on the globe was in, that six feet for three miles is that right no no how many degrees uh, how many miles do you need to go for one degree of curve on the globe one degree yeah one degree of curve how many miles uh, i don't know what is it 70 miles almost one degree well how much is one degree the 70 miles is a lot of feet right yeah many thousands of feet yes so, so where one is that degree of curve. <laughs> one <It's> degree <laughs> let me an architect building a building that's 70 miles long from one end to the other would be off by one degree a 70 mile long building now if you've ever done construction you know that from one end of a house to another expecting only one degree of of divergence is a ridiculously challenging amount of precision to get yeah right so uh cinnamon control this is a good one we don't have an equation for the perimeter of an ellipse, yet ellipses exist and have perimeters. So like the three-body problem, ellipses exist, 
ellipses exist, but we're not using the solar system model to predict them because of the three body problem. No, the, the point is we do not have an equation for the perimeter of any ellipse, which is oh, similar. To, Sorry, I, I was thinking eclipse. No, which is it. similar in many ways to the three body problem that we don't have a, a formulaic answer to the three body problem. We have yeah. other answers to it. We also I, have other ways to measure the perimeter of an ellipse. Oh, I, I would agree that that both that even the flat Earth model, there's a lot of a lot of things that are still a mystery. I'm like, uh, everything is still a mystery, actually. Hundred percent, still a mystery to solar system model too. Have the, there, I mean, the dark matter the, mystery. <laughs> there are no, there are no, uh, no ways to do navigation on flat Earth. Nothing at all. You, the, the, you can't you can't plan a flight on flat earth using the globe map no on flat earth on flat earth you cannot plan a flight on flat earth you can't get your position with stars on flat earth you can't explain the size of this the moon being consistent throughout the the time that you see it on flat earth you can't explain what time the moon will set tonight you can't explain what direction the sun will set. But you neither can't... on the solar system model. You cannot predict if... eclipses if you can't predict three celestial bodies at once. That's wrong. And clearly, absolutely wrong, because this book exists and is accurate. Are you aware there was a, an eclipse in April? Uh... This book was printed prior yeah, to 2021. The question is, is yet, how are they making yet, those predictions? It's in here. The VSOP 87 and ELP 2000 are, are the, the geometric models that are used to predict it. Right there. ELP 2000 is a, a geometric model. VSOP 87 is a geometric model of the entire solar system. It was used to predict this particular eclipse. That happened in april and it was this is where people saw it so that three body problem crap is clearly not true uh, well i'll have to look into it more but no flat earther can predict any clips at all never have well i heard that ptolemy predicted them for 600 years um and based off the geocentric model not at all Sorrow cycles are just numerical patterns. It has nothing to do with geometry. Well, I'll have to. I'll have to look. Yeah. At, it's me. It's going to be fun to to review this video and look into yeah. all these topics. All right. And... Many Karen says you don't know anything about any topic. You're an average show, and yet you challenge all scientists like ever. This is the nerve. Exact... The infathomable nerve. Oh, the nerve of, of, of questioning the system. <laughs> yes. Question yes, away have. with substance. Absolutely. Oh, my reason, I, as I with explained substance. before, my reason for doing that is because everything involving nutrition is complete fucking garbage, and I, I experience and realize that for myself. And that's why I do <laughs> Every not everything mainstream narrative don't, don't eat fiber people because everything is wrong including fiber it's great to take a break from fiber it's great apparently uh eddie reese is wondering how tall you are probably taller than you i'm just, <laughs> six one okay he said because he started out let's measure the dip the dip angle to the artificial horizon not to the globe model no, i'm no, still no. confused on he that said, let, he said he uh, said i'll he said, let's measure the dip. How tall are you, Scott? A little low ball, Eddie Reese, a little low ball. All right, Andrew Rouse says, how is it possible that when you're in Arlington, Texas, you can look west and see Fort Worth and look east and see Dallas, but just the tops of the buildings? Well, I mean, how far away are you? What's the height angle? It's not a lot of information. Yeah, well, Arlington, Texas, I suppose, tells you how far away. But yes, I don't know how tall, but... But there's another thing. The uh, bottom-up obstruction is predicted on the globe, and we can get, knowing knowing uh, refraction amount, we can get within a, a range. But I've never seen the formula or the, the quantity of 
bottom-up obstruction for flat Earth. Yet it happens. I, I mean, that's like that's something I, I'm confused on. When, when people zoom in on a boat, like you can see the whole like the whole fucking thing, except for oh, you can't see the last foot of the boat. And you're like, well, the like boats, you can never see the whole fucking boat. Like how much well, yeah, of the it's, boat it's sitting in it's sitting in the water, but but there are plenty of times where you can see the top of the boat. And you can even see two very similar boats. These shipping boats are especially good because they're very big and they're and there's their their height is known. And you can see one, all of it, and you can see another just the tops of the shipping containers. What is causing that? Uh, bottom-up obstruction perspective is just things getting smaller it doesn't explain it and what is the the method that we can use to test that claim right if it oh. is if you are at a height of 10 feet and if the boat is at a distance of seven miles how much for flat earth should be obstructed bottom up well, let me go to the earth uh, the calculator no, no, for flat like, earth not for the earth, not for the globe no i know the calculator that you guys earth. can use you can't use the globe calculator you can only use the flat earth calculator that doesn't exist the flat earth calculator yeah the flat earth calculator is that you can't see the horizon due to perspective no 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 you, what is the flat earth prediction for the amount of bottom-up obstruction given the distance of the object and the height of the observer there's no answer, Scott. Perspective is the answer. No, that is not a testable quantity. I, I, in science, yeah, that's true. you don't Maybe. just throw out vague words and say, hey, we've confirmed it. No, you, you say, what's you the You throw hypothesis? out the word refraction and expect me to believe it. I can't. No, I gave you empirical measurements of refraction. Okay, I yeah. gave you the formula that you can test. I haven't looked into them. So okay, we'll... but here's the question. Here's the thing. Again, this is another problem with flat Earth. We have an explanation for the globe. For flat Earth, what is the bottom-up obstruction quantity at seven miles away for a 10-foot-high observer? Well, can I use a calculator? Are you You, you cannot use the globe calculator. No, I use the one that, that does it off the radius that doesn't do eight in the eight feet squared or whatever. That's the globe math. You need to use the flat earth prediction. Where I have to put in refraction? <laughs> However, the flat earth explains it. There's never been one presented. So again, we have the same pattern. The globe has a, has a prediction and it works. Flat earth doesn't have a prediction. Okay, earth curve calculator. All right, we're looking at 10 feet. You said how many miles? Seven or? You can't use the globe calculator. This is Earth curve calculator based off the radius of the Earth. This isn't an exactly. Eight. You can't use that because you don't think that the Earth so, is a globe. So you're saying every single Earth curve calculator that that pops up on Google search is all fucking wrong. No, I'm that's saying, what you're saying. That's the no, all. What I'm saying is, what is the flat Earth version of it? That the reason it appears higher is due to atmospheric conditions. And and what is the formula that we can use to test that claim? I don't know. I'm not a fucking expert. I've told you that. Okay. So what I'm saying is, and, and there is no flat earther ever that has this. None have ever presented this formula. I find that hard to believe, but okay. I, I find it hard to believe that you didn't know this. Scott, there's there's a few there topics. There is I don't know. no answer for flat Earth, and there is an answer for the globe. And all you've done is look at people misapplying the globe, and never once questioned and said, "Huh, what is the actual flat Earth prediction for that?" Things are definitely obstructed bottom up. How much should there be for flat Earth at a certain distance and height? Okay, I'm no I'm answer. Gonna, I'm going to give you this. Okay. So this, this is exactly what my mind is going. Uh, one year ago, I'm like, there's no way this is fucking possible. Like you can easily go look um, at the planets in our solar system and just know that we live in this heliocentric model that, you, that you're claiming, right? 
So that's what I did. I'm like, okay, so let's look at, you know, let's look at, um, you, like there's all these big telescopes around, you know, NASA has the Hubble telescope. There's all these big telescopes around the world, right? Yep. So I'm like, okay, well, show me one of these telescopes focusing in on, like show me footage of one of these giant telescopes focusing in on one of the planets in our solar system. But there, there is none. It's all photos. It's just one fucking photo that you have to believe that. And the only footage that we have is an amateur fucking person with a Nikon 1000 or whatever, or a good telescope. And, and you, and that's all we have to go off of. And so when I that's, look at that, that you, you are just parroting a video that you saw on YouTube. It is not, I'm not at, at all. all. I'm thinking where the fuck is this footage of the stars in our fucking solar system and universe? If we have all these giant fucking telescopes, they're all how hard over is it to the place. A video camera to a giant telescope. Amateurs, how hard is that? amateurs do it all the time. Amateurs don't do it, but none of these big telescopes actually fucking the big show do us. too. You just don't want to look at them. They show us photos, just a photo. That's okay. it. They no what footage. Do you, what do you want? I want them to focus in to be like, hey, this is us on the big ass telescope getting on this big ass telescope showing us what the telescope is seeing while it like i don't know if it zooms in or it focuses in on like fucking neptune or mars and that doesn't fucking exist you, you want to see the process of it being out of focus and then zooming into focus yes i want to see that's the not how telescopes there. work again if you had the background in the science you wouldn't be confused by this it, it, you can never like it's hard to trust a photo. telescopes don't do video because they do long exposures you can't attach because a video they, camera to no see you cannot because it would just be black i want to see that i want to see it i don't care in. nobody cares <laughs> do it for flat earth uh, you can't again yes, the amateur footage shows you exactly what flat earth it just looks like water vibrating in frequency that's it doesn't out look of like focus. any spherical anything that's it's out like, of focus there are the people that have field. nikon p1 1000s that know how to focus their cameras and do zoom into saturn or jupiter and show it in focus the only one that looks anything spherical is saturn that's it everything else looks like vibrating you, frequency in water they're out of focus scott don't look at out of focus video well then what do i look at a photo and i trust it i want to look at their are videos video. with p i told you with p9 p9 900s and p1000 yes p900 of jupiter they're 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 not high quality because it's the, not a good lens the footage looks like vibrating water and then they all out of a sudden of show focus. you a fucking photograph like if it looks thing. like Scott, if it looks like vibrating water, it's because it's out of focus. That's why. I mean, I'd, I'd have to take your word on that, you know? No, you can take, you take the word. Footage. Footage. You can take the word of a professional photographer on that, which you are not. And no flat earther that's showing not, out of focus videos is either. I do not trust any like it's like oh it's this is mainstream and official and an expert that doesn't mean it's anything it's not, not it's not that it's mainstream there are millions of professional photographers that would look at those videos and say that all say the same thing they're out of focus yeah because they all believe the heliocentric Be, model. no because they all know how cameras work Scott, they don't look out people focus that are professional all, photographers like know how cameras work. And if they look at graph. if they look at an obvious out of focus camera, they will they will know immediately that it's an out of focus camera. There are things that you can see in there that you know what uh, that indicate to you that it's out of focus. You can so see you can look, see they just look like vibrating dancing yeah because star, they're but... out of focus you can do the exact same thing with the street light down the street out of focus yeah don't look at out of focus videos and think that you're seeing anything revolutionary you're why? not okay but why can't they attach a video camera to one of the giant telescopes because focus... that's not how giant telescopes work. you can't attach it you can't attach a simple video camera to a telescope Correct. That's not how it works. There's nothing to plug in. Nothing at all. That's no. There isn't. They're 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 purpose made. 
So only the viewer, and who are allowed so to you, look at that? You could go get, for less than the cost of a P9000, or P1000, you could get yourself an amateur telescope. And you could put your eyeball up to it, and you could focus in on Jupiter, and you could see what it looks like with your own eye. For I'm, less I'm than the cost of a P1000. Like energy. What's that? I'm, I'm guessing it'll look like a vibrating ball of energy. It, it will not. Like Yeah. All that you've seen is flat earthers showing stupid videos of stupid out of focus P900s and P1000s who don't know how to focus a camera. They look out of focus at all. They, they are out of focus. It's stupid to say that. Scott, I need to, you to understand this. It's incredibly stupid for somebody to play three three strings that are untuned on a guitar and claim it's a G string, a G chord right you would instantly laugh at that and say that's not a g chord if, if the guitar's out of tune and they're just picking three random strings you would say no that's not a g chord and then they would say to you what i'm not i'm, I'm not going to trust you you're just you're just you're just big music theory i'm not gonna that's a g chord because i said so because somebody in a video said so It, it's right? hard to tell you what's real and know what's not. How to you know how to construct a G chord. It, Somebody yeah. that doesn't and said that they had just played a G chord, you would immediately know it's not a G chord. All right, okay. Let's let's say that I come to the conclusion that that that's the case, that these 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 amateur footage videos of stars are not the case. Uh, well, what about these act this photos that they're showing us and what happens when they show us that like the Jupiter that they're showing us in 2015 and 2016 have these same exact fucking clouds they don't have all the they same did clouds. what's that they don't have the same clouds don't I've look seen... don't look at a low resolution video on YouTube look at the high resolution video they're exactly sorry, the same. The, the, the high resolution f photograph. Look at both of them. They're not exactly the same. You are only referencing the YouTube videos you've seen. I can tell you, I'm 100% certain you did not go and get the original high resolution version of it. Compare them side by side, did you? I, I've i looked at the, well, like you go to Google, you type in, uh, you know, whatever planet and they'll they'll kind of show you what year things happen and they look the same so so you didn't go get the high resolution compare them right uh sounds like sounds like it's you you're about you're, you're kind of meme thick on this <laughs> um all right greg Ware says scott don't become a flur if you seem too smart for that it's not a question of smart i think it's a question of just not right. listen to what you pa told. Pilo 1408 says, why do so many flat earthers have opinions on things that they wish they knew more about? If they seek truth, they would have learned it already. I've only, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I'm sure uh, Nick Tuna has a lot more years of looking into this than I do. Yeah, but here, when I first watched 200 Proofs, immediately, every single one of them I saw as, as a lie. When he said the horizon always rises to eye level, I knew immediately how to test that. And I knew immediately in his video that he did not show that and he was being deceptive. You know that it, I, I'm sure well, you watched that. assume it needed an explanation because I've seen, I saw a video with so, the, the water level showing the actual horizon and what our perspective actually shows us what the horizon and the, the And the horizon is always below that, isn't it? Yeah. Showing so, a higher Eric Dubay's, Eric Dubay's number two, he says that the horizon always rises to eye level. And then he shows a bunch of videos where he's not measuring eye level. Where it's just a camera pointing around and there's no indication on screen what is eye level. So, so I saw that immediately. I said, well, where's the measurement of eye level? He didn't show it. But now, when, it when somebody level? else, when somebody else, no, there was no water level in his, in his video. Well, so, it's 200 proofs. I don't ex expect him to explain it everything thoroughly. I would expect him to, I would expect every single one of them to be explained thoroughly. If it's proof, 
right? Now, I tested it myself. I went to uh, Anchorage, Alaska. And at the mouth of the Kenai River, I used the Theodolite app in my phone and I calibrated it at the mouth of the Kenai River. The next day I flew home and I measured to see if the horizon rose to eye level. This is what I saw. That horizontal line across there is eye level. And that circle you're seeing is the moon. So the moon did not rise to eye level. And down below that square box is the top of the clouds. And then below the top of the clouds is going to be the horizon. The horizon did not rise to eye level. So Eric Dubay's proof, claimed proof number two, didn't work. I just tested it. And I saw it when he did that. And I'm like, I don't, I, he didn't show measurements. I went and measured it. It didn't work. I recently lost, it's like a new video from Dearth, and he, he does that exact, exact same thing with the water level, and there's like a, a popular meme with the Glovers of the water level being higher than the sea level, and then he uses the water level to show that that's due to perspective, that they're actually, because, you know, you can, when you can, like I said earlier, that you can see boats way above the horizon, that's because the actual physical horizon is above what we can see. But it never is, actually. And it's not perspective. Perspective makes things smaller. It's not a magic word. It's not a get out of jail card. Refraction is the, is the no, same thing. No, per, refraction is empirically measured. MCTune.net slash refraction. I have dozens of articles, uh, not, not articles, empirical measurements of refraction. Right? Um, <clears throat> Timothy Hope says, if this man is honest, he will not be a flirt for long. One can hope. If he's not, teaching is not for him. I got a few more of these I, I want to get through. It's possible. It's um, possible I look into it and discover that we do, in fact, live on a globe. But I feel like I'd have to be, like, really high to believe that. <laughs> But it's, it's just Heath, a... Heath M says, I'm sorry, he insults all of us who teach physics. No, I don't I insult need, any of you. Just you, know, you, need to, you need graphic. to understand. You teach, you teach music. You saying that people that teach, that physics is wrong is like somebody else coming in that doesn't know music saying that you don't know music. It's, it's possible. <laughs> no, mean, it's not. I, you I'm do open know. to the possibility. <laughs> you, but you do know music, Scott. I know the, I know the basics, the theory. It doesn't mean I. It doesn't mean that's the way to go. I mean, there's there's things that I don't know. There's things that can't be explained. For right. sure. Uh, Timothy Hope, the frequency differential of an octave isn't empirical. Now, what is the frequency differential of an octave? Frequency. So the frequency of most music is 440 hertz. No, an octave. So the difference between an octave? Yeah. I couldn't tell off the top of my head. You don't know? The All frequency right. A, of A440, octave. what's an octave lower than A440? Why, why does that even matter? 220. An octave is, is having or doubling of the frequency. So it's an octave oh, okay. up from okay. A440. Yeah, that's that's uh, is what is what what frequency of what frequency? The frequency an octave up from A four forty is what A eighty. Okay. This this is <laughs> this is an octave. This is like I'm surprised you didn't. Yeah, know this. I mean, the octave. You want to get into frequency? I mean, the the standard. Uh, the music is standardly played at 440 hertz, and a lot of people think it should be played at 432 hertz. I has converted nothing, all. Has nothing to do with it. It's if, even if you choose 432 hertz, what's an octave up from 432? Who gives a shit? <laughs> what frequency is an octave? I don't know. I don't even see it. 864. Double 
the frequency, you go up an octave. Yeah, depending on what frequency you're at. I tune my guitar to 432 hertz, so... It has nothing to do with how you arbitrarily choose A. It has everything okay. to do with what an octave is. You double the frequency, regardless of where you start, and you've moved up an octave. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Well, people are going to be commenting. As you know, Scott, people are going to be commenting, oh, questioning no. that you know music. Most people have no idea that there's a frequency. So even music theory has nothing to do with knowing what frequency you're at. That has nothing to do with anything. That's just a that's just an observation. Okay. I don't even get it. Uh, Lael says electrical theory states that in a wire it has states zero equals no flow and one equals a flow of electricity. But you should tune your music to 432 hertz. It'll help you break out of the programming bullshit that you're currently subscribed to. Not, not true at all. It's nature's frequency. I've, I've seen that. Why is it nature's frequency? It's it's based off like the like the lightning and just the frequency of natural sounds. I couldn't really tell you. It's been a long time exactly. since exactly. I've seen any of that shit. But uh, I, I did convert all my music to 432, and I did happen to find that I was way more fucking open-minded after doing that. So you should do it. 440 hertz. 4, 4, 440 hertz is like, if you, look at the, if you look at how it affects water, if you look at how that, that frequency affects water, it's like a distorted, fucked-up picture. And if you look at 432 hertz, it's a, it's a good picture. That's all so you should do this both. People at home, that's all BS. All right. Uh, three Ron says, biology is messy and can be different for everyone. Physics in this is the same everywhere. Change the frequency, you'll excellent. listen to different movies. An excellent point. Um, Tim Pryor says, who says we see too far? Did you apply the calculations from a globe model to see if that's correct? A literal mountain that doesn't account for refraction <laughs> says we see too far. Yeah, if you if you pretend refraction doesn't exist, is, is if you fun. yeah if you don't believe in floating mountains. All right, Alyssum says uh, just joined. Why is all navigation based on a globe? Stay hydrated. I should stay hydrated. Got some water here. So why is all navigation based on a globe? I mean, I went over that earlier. All I mean, navigation I mean, you is can say it is, but. You I highly doubt that the. Do you already said that the pilot's not already aware of the curvature, so no, I don't know. I said the navigation. Navigation. Plotting yeah, they their don't, routes. They're not even aware of it, apparently. That's convenient. Plotting their routes is navigation. Yeah, on your on the globe the, map. The distances are based on Haversine formula. The maps they use are Lambert conformal conic projections if they're air, typically, and if they're on the uh, ocean they typically use a mercator projection projections all of them projections nobody uses just a flat non-projection map there is none you cannot do any navigation without a globe so kirk b uh twice put in a uh one dollar super chat but no message thank you for that uh three ron again comes um curvature was used when building the Verrazano narrow bridge. Did you know that? How long is that bridge? It's pretty long. It's long enough that they needed to take that into account because it's a, um, it uses, uh, it's got pillars and it uses uh, cables to support them. So knowing the distance between the tops of the pillars was uh, necessary to have a very, at a very uh, precise level so that the, the length of the cables was not messed up. So I started reading the chat after a while. Got to watch it. Not always a good. It'll, it'll get you off track quick. Anyway, but, uh, so so large large projects do use the curvature of the Earth, but small ones don't need to because it just isn't enough of a factor. I, I, I'm at, like the bridge. That's kind of crazy to assume curvature while building a bridge. You want it as level as possible. Level is a curve. I've seen your definition of level. It's not my definition of level. Which is it's a contradiction. It is not. It's the definition of level that's been around since at least the 1700s. Having no part higher than another. Conforming to the curvature of the surface of the earth. 
That's the definition of level. And surveyors use that because they, they matter. Having no part higher than another is a curve. Yeah, elevation from, from a globe. Elevation from the globe is distance from the center. So that's high. How high you are is the elevation. So if you're going to keep everything at the same elevation, then on a globe, that's going to be a curve because different points on the surface of the Earth, in order to be the same distance from the center point, will form a sphere. And a sphere has higher points than other points. If you change your elevation. It's just, yeah, I, I, I've looked at that definition and it just makes me laugh. It, cause... it doesn't matter that, that a musician doesn't care about how surveyors do their job. Surveyors no, do their job the way they do their job. I don't blame you at all. I'm assuming that, that they don't give a crap about what the technical definition that's a contradiction of it's level. It's not a contradiction. You it, think it's a contradiction no because, part higher because, than another. because you have pre-selected your definition and then you, you say it's a contradiction. But surveyors, that's their job and they, they need to be good at their job because if they're not, they may have a problem maintaining that employment. So if, if they don't know the difference between something that has no part higher than another and something that does have a part higher than another, that's a fucking problem, I think. Not at all. You just don't <laughs> seem to have... All right. Obi-Wan Obi -Wan says, Scott, please stop <laughs> watching idiots on YouTube and calling that research. Well, that's too pick, bad, because I really pick enjoy one. It. Pick one topic... And, and explore it deep enough, not by watching Flat Earth videos on the topic, but by learning the, the surrounding uh, topic well enough to have an understanding of it. I do plan on doing that. I do. Pick I, I really Start with one. I really right. want to go measure the curvature of over a lake with a good camera, and that would be interesting to me. That's not how you do it. According to you, yeah. <laughs> but according to me, that makes perfect sense. And that's why you need to get educated in that particular topic enough, because you don't have that depth. Because according to me, with your not physics background, isn't, isn't it. You need to be able to take into account the things that are necessary. There has I can to see there. already that what you are doing is you are starting with your preselected conclusion. Same with you, though. No. I am open to be falsified. The, the refraction is not open to be falsified, I don't think. It's been it, empirically it, measured. So unless there's empirical measurements otherwise, I'm going to go with the empirical measurements of refraction. And ignoring okay, okay, them okay, okay, would say, only got... happen if you pre-selected your conclusion and discovered that it was contradicted when you included the appropriate refraction. Okay, no, no, no. So I like, let's say I go to a lake, I assume no refraction and I get my measurements and then I assume refraction and I get different measurements. And then I would have to figure out if refraction is really that big of a difference. And because I've seen videos of what refraction looks like and it doesn't, like I've seen it distort and bend, but I've never, I've, I've never seen any video lift a fucking mountain up like that's what i would need to see because like it, you you have to show you've seen it change the horizon right yeah uh, I've have seen you it... seen refraction move the horizon up and down a small percent there you go seen it a small percent oh. all right timothy hope says incredulity is not evidence warren evans says are are you a flurfer just because just to be special because all I hear from you are buzzwords. Yeah, I just feel like I'm really special, so. I'm just like the last, I'm actually Christ in the banana-shaped word world. You found me out. <laughs> oh my gosh. He, he, I bet, I, I bet Sam, Sam Owen is probably fuming at me. His last time he was on, like over a year ago, he stayed up all night pacing around in circles in a live video that nobody was watching, but of course went out on his channel. Jeez. 
Um, <clears throat> Tim Pryor says, I look at our focus videos and trust it. I don't trust videos that are in focus. <laughs> I'll read that again. I look at out of focus videos and trust it, but I don't trust the videos that are in focus. Because it's not like a because photo you are so going with your pre-selected conclusion. It's very easy to manipulate a photo. It's harder it's, to manipulate. Footage. Just get a camera and focus it. I, I, I got a feeling if I got a P9, like a P1000 Nikon, whatever, and looked at a planet, I'd see the same thing that I'm expecting. If you did not focus it, yes. And, and I did focus it, I and, would see. And, and here's the thing. No flat earther has done the effort to understand photography enough and how to focus their autofocus camera that's the thing the, it, by default it's in autofocus mode and when you have a a black star field or a black field and one thing in it the camera autofocus doesn't know what to do it won't autofocus on a, my, pin, a point like that in one year from now we should do another interview and i'm gonna i'm gonna be I'm going to know all the ins and outs of every topic we've covered. All right. <laughs> Mr. QTube, first name Fah, says rot, buoyancy, rot, bo density, rot, three-body problem. I think he's, I was supposed to make a parrot sound. I'm just point like I'm pointing out some serious fucking problems with the, the heliocentric model. No, you. We all grew Scott, up with the heliocentric Scott, model. We all watched Star Trek. Scott, <laughs> I'm not any all... fucking... All you have done is is point out <laughs> that you don't understand the topic well enough, and you know that, right? You 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 don't claim to understand the topic well enough. So just just say, okay, I, I you're right. Uh -oh. I don't get it. There you cut out. I'm sorry, you cut out. Of what topic? Uh, it's okay. It's okay to admit you you also believe the Earth is flat. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. If you don't have the background in something. Just say, I don't have a background. In, in, I've in, said that from the so, beginning. But, and I'm but just you trying to ask but, basic right. fucking questions but, and try to find so a this good is a good one. This is a good one. Mute Doggy says, why not focus on one and come back in a month instead of a lot and come back in a year? What topic? People in the chat, what topic should we do? Well, I All mean, right. I'm not an idiot. I know that he's spent years looking into this shit. It's not going to take me six months to, to know that he's pointing out shit that i don't understand all right nick kirpin says scott you can get your own telescope and see it yourself you can get a camera and do this yourself you want to buy it for me <laughs> i'll look through it <laughs> I'm buying you a camera uh but here's here's the uh here's the answer you're looking for mr e-man says your local astronomical society will show you big telescopes are built for a specific purpose you need a study proposal to use them, but a local astronomy society or club will will show you that. And there are there are quite a few small telescopes that are all over the place, and and the problem you'll have is getting them to stop talking to you about. Them. That's a real problem. That the astronomy nerds, once they get your ear, will not stop. Alyssa. I says you can replicate out of focus stars with a street lamp and there are some videos of people with a p900 or p1000 getting that wavy watery look with a street light and then changing focus and then you see oh i just feel like all of you should just let go of the glow model and just just accept that it's not what we're told. <laughs> Except the model that doesn't have any answers. Uh, Figure it out, Dan. Yeah. Parabindu says, I agree about food and have had amazing results with integrative medicine. But I have a physics undergrad degree. Don't compare the unknowable complexity of living systems and elegance of equations that describe the physical universe. It's just the nature of of the narrative it's just to always no he just said don't don't compare the complexity of living systems to the elegance of equations that describe the physical universe and that's what you're just about to do 
Let's not do it. All right, liquid flames. Well, if we don't, says, you know, don't ignore the complexity of nutrition and what we're supposed to eat, and everyone's different, and just don't think for yourself. Whatever the case, it's the same fucking thing. It's just, it's all the same. It's all just. I mean, but physics is so much more testable. And, and it's not different for every person. Like, what, but what, how come the flat earthers have all the small scale experiments, like under wrap? You know, they, they don't. None Gravity of them can explain everything or anything. None, no flat earther explains anything. Explain flat Earth downward acceleration. Explain the actual magnitude and direction. No flat earther can. So saying, talking about but no, the, the, no, the misunderstanding of the globe but, but, doesn't but make the problem go away that there's no flat earth explanation. Flat earther can, they have an assumption. It's not an assumption. It's. I said that earlier. Don't say it's an assumption can, just because be you seen, don't know what it is. It can there's, seem, there's empirical evidence that brought them to that position, not assumptions. You just don't know the details of it. And you filled in your lack of knowing the details of it with, they just have an assumption. They don't just have an assumption. They have actual empirical evidence, measurements, explanations, experiments. For, for, for someone that doesn't need the background, they need to be able to see something that's simple and practical and that can prove the point that you're making. And I don't see that at all. What, they don't, the, no, no, no. They don't need to. Nobody is under any obligation to make it understandable to somebody that doesn't have the background. And the complexity of the universe doesn't what, need what, to be what understood if by you. The background. What would you, what like? What's the explanation then? I would love to see a flat earther that has the background and could could actually have a conversation on that level. But none of them can. None. So Not one flat earther as the background to actually have a conversation, a meaningful conversation on what causes things to go down at about 9.8 meters per second squared. I've never seen it. No flat earth okay. can. Okay, here's here's a question. It's okay, so I have not watched that much of Nathan Oakley, but I was trying to find you and Nathan Oakley debating. I was trying to find a video of that. No, he he won't debate me. I saw a video of you uh, of like the debate starts and then you go on and you start announcing your rewards for the challenge but yes. you completely do not listen to any questions that Absolutely, anyone yes. in the because discord is asking I'll, I'll explain it i uh we did a competition called top left competition it's about the dunning kruger effect and the winner was mitchell from australia and i sent him an email saying you've won I would like to, would you like to come on to accept it live? Uh, and I would like to send you a t-shirt with your, <clears throat> with the top left logo on it. He never gave me his address. He said, present it to me on Nathan Oakley's show. What he said. And he gave the time. And so I went on there. Invited by Mitchell from Australia to present to him his award for top left. That's why I was there. That was the only reason why I was there. Now, Mitchell did not tell this to, to Nathan Oakley that he invited us to come onto his show, to somebody else's show. Then later in that show, Mitchell lied, claiming that he never said that I should come on and present the award to him. And I, and I showed the email, um, of it. I can I can bring it up right now in fact. I will. So that is why I was not there to talk to Nathan. Uh, that was the thing that made me assume that that you're purposely trying to mislead people. Because it just it from when you don't hear any other side of the perspective, it seems like a yeah, very low ball. and that's exactly what Nathan Oakley was doing. He was not listening because I I made it clear that I was on there for one person. But he was purpose. asking. Oh shit! But he, he was, was asking you. He was asking off-topic things. 
I was there for one purpose. I was there for one purpose. All right, here it is. Good news, you're you're in the running for the award. And then uh, this is later in the conversation. So I'll see you Monday, 2 p.m. UK time, and Nathan Oakley, then you present my award. And then he said, insert cowardly excuse for not being here. I was there. But he never bothered to tell Nathan that I was there for that purpose. No. Right? So, Mitchell lied, which is, which is standard, standard for him. And I showed it right there. So that's why I didn't do it. And I wasn't there to debate Nathan. Nathan doesn't allow debates. And I have invited him many times to, to debate on a third party platform, not on my show, not on his show, somebody else's show. He won't do it. Why not? It's a good question. It is a good question. There's yeah. I mean, I even asked, I think I even tried to, I tried to reach out and ask for more information on this because people were talking about it on the globe discussion shit and I couldn't get an answer. So. Yep. Oh, all All right. I, let me, let me, we're getting close to this one here. Uh, liquid flame says I base my flat earth belief on my observations, but the frequency of music doesn't matter because it's just an observation. It's an experience. I mean, when you experience converting all your music to 432 and then you experience questioning everything like you, you, n you never really did. That's pretty, that's an interesting observation. Are you aware that sound is air pressure without a container? Uh, we haven't even discussed how there's pressure without a container, except assuming the heliocentric model. So no, not at all. Sound is air pressure without a container. It has nothing to do with the shape of the earth. Sound is air pressure without a container. There's pressure differentials coming out of out of out of your, your mouth or coming out of the guitar or coming out of an instrument. It, and it travels at the speed of sound. So pressure differentials travel at the speed of sound. Because that's what sound is. It's pressure differentials. And there's no container. That's entirely possible. Music is pretty damn magical, so. And sound. Just sound in general. Oh, sound. Okay. Sound in general is air pressure without a container. And of course, yeah. I we don't claim that there is just pressure that we claim that there is a pressure differential we don't claim a perfect vacuum anywhere space is just a low pressure system and you can you can go from from here at low elevation up to 120,000 feet and lose 99 percent of the pressure and there's no container between between them i would just recommend Converting your music to 432 hertz, changing the frequency, because uh, it's just it's it's something that you experience that all of a sudden you your your taste in music drastically changes. You don't want to hear any of the shit that you were listening to, and it's pretty interesting. So all of a sudden, when you change the frequency, you don't want to hear the same music you've been listening to for 20 years, which is pretty interesting. And all of a sudden, you start questioning everything. So there might so be what, some what is a ninth in music a ninth a ninth yes i couldn't tell you off the top of my head wouldn't it be an octave plus one step see i i've seen your videos and, and it's, I don't know. I just this feel like you music. always, this you, isn't, this isn't, this isn't the shape of the earth. This is just music theory. Yeah, but it's like random shit though. It's random shit that no one thinks about with music theory. A ninth. I've heard of a ninth before. I I'm not, I'm, I'm, 
I mean, I've played trombone, but I'm not a musician. All right. Uh, Ast Astronaut 66 says, what mechanism on the flat earth makes it possible for you to determine your latitude by using a pendulum? Are you aware that if you take a pendulum and you you uh, let it swing back and forth and you time how long it it uh, it swings and you and you measure the difference in angle between them, you are capable of figuring out not only your latitude but whether or not you're in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, based of course on the globe. But what is the, the and there there is if the pendulum actually changes its it processes in the angle that it's swinging back and forth. What is the flat Earth cause for that? Couldn't tell you. That's the problem. There is an explanation for the globe and not for flat Earth. Again, there's an assumption for the globe. No assumption. That there's no answer for flat earth and there's an answer for you the can globe. You come up with an assumption, it matches. but you it's, don't do that. <laughs> but it's but it's but it's more than an assumption because it's been empirically confirmed. Because right? it's been when told you, to us over and no, over. No, no, no. When you test, you, you have a hypothesis. That's your assumption. You may assume things in your hypothesis, right? And then you calculate the consequences of that hypothesis and then you test it, right? Hypothesis, the Earth is a globe and it's rotating. And it has a particular radius. And it's rotating at a particular rate. Okay, then calculate the consequences of that. Well, a pendulum swinging will change its angle of, of the swing over time. That's the consequences of that hypothesis. And then you go test it. And you, you, you let a pendulum swing, and over time, it changes the angle that it swings. Then, so you say, all right, well, at a, at a low level, we've confirmed it. That's no longer an assumption. We've now confirmed the hypothesis. But then you can actually go and measure the quantity of the deflection and how long it took. And then you can use your hypothesis, the radius of the Earth, and the, ro the rate at which it rotates, Apply that to the formula and get your latitude. If it works, then all of those things together are confirmed. One time, could be a fluke. Do it again somewhere else. Do it again somewhere else. Do it a thousand times. Hey, we've got, we've got a, a pretty solid base to that. That's not an assumption anymore. It's a confirmed um, effect. Or, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry it is it is a a confirmed it is it, it moves up to the the uh it graduates to being a theory a scientific theory hmm. um that's how science is done it's perfectly fine to make an assumption of course the radius of the earth isn't isn't an assumption it was previously measured many many times uh, Mr. QTube first name fast says, doesn't the frequency of sound cover 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz? And it does. Um, and your your four 432 hertz is is kind of a a, a conspiracy theorist favorite. Yes, it's always the conspiracy theory. Uh, well, I, I've heard that a, a better explanation is conspiracy addict. Tim Pryor says, and the person that took the picture explained why we could see it he does not think the Earth is flat. You mean like the moon landing? <laughs> no, I think it was a previous topic. Um... So I, I, okay, that is one of the hardest things to believe is, is the moon landing. Well, 15,000 photographs. You can independent confirmation multiple times literally see the wires in some clips and you literally you can cannot but i'd love to see the analysis of the wires that are claimed on the original footage the original of uh, uh, photographs that can be obtained in uh, houston texas and you can go look at i i have a i have a i'm gonna have a guitar uh teaching youtube channel with a few thousand subscribers but i created a 
a new channel for fun. I've made like nine videos over the last month, kind of making fun of the moon landing and ISS missions. And you, in one of them, you can literally see the wire pulling one of the astronauts off, up all of a sudden, which is, and then you, that's pretty fun. I mm. mean, I don't know how people believe the moon landing. That's all right. Real, real Cygnus says, are you still okay with wasting an entire year on flat earth? Is it I think the real question is how long can you defend the globe? <laughs> You can use the it, same arguments. It, it, it the thing is, it, it, we've gone over every th single one of these topics. The globe has an answer. The flat Earth has nothing. So this uh, serial five ten says this guy doesn't know music theory. I do. Go to. I don't know. Music theory isn't uh, isn't my strength. I know a little. Uh, apparently, serial five ten thinks he can school you in music theory. So. It's a pretty basic subject. You got scales, chord progression formulas. All right. Timbo Turtle says, I design roads and bridges. I definitely use Earth Curve if the project is long enough. I did survey and did as well. If you build a small scale, you won't. Yeah, on small scale, you don't need to take the curvature into account because it's it's not significant. It's not going to add significant error. But when you do large stuff, you have to. Tim Pryor again comes with cameras are not telescopes. Why do you guys keep thinking a camera is good enough? I've, yeah. I've looked into it. I thought that Nikon 1000 can has a better zoom than most telescopes. That's absolutely not true. Not, not, according, not according to the big ass telescopes that don't show any fucking footage, but the ones that... No, no, no. That's just dumb. That's just dumb. Uh, LB Stuff Things and More says, Scott, you going to ask your fam about the globe? What do you think? No. What are you, don't really, you don't really tend to ask people that don't want to think about things. You, don't, you, didn't, you didn't bring it up uh, at Thanksgiving? Well, if I did, that'd be an interesting topic, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, don't don't do it. A Rocky Big Speech says Scotty doesn't know. I think I what's that coming from? I don't know. He's got musical notes around it. All right. My goodness, there's a few more still. Um Mark Reed says what what you feel is not empirical and is a terrible way to evaluate reality. That's true. I agree. If only it's the globe earthers can provide observable, practical evidence to support. Yeah, and we do. I've every, never seen any. Time. You've, you've never looked at them. I. It, it's always mctune.net slash refraction slash g slash r okay, okay. slash spin. Talk. Slash curve. You, last, you, you rest the level thing on the table and you zoom in and you can see a little bit of curvature versus a literal mountain that should not be there. It, it's hard to... A literal mountain that should be there. Due to imagination. No, due to the empirically confirmed refraction. Refraction, I just... That's a hard one to wrap Incredulity my mind. Isn't, isn't an explanation. I feel like I'd have to smoke crack like the last no, person. You feel like you'd need, to, to, understand you'd need to take a physics class. <laughs> take a physics class. All right. Gary Little, does he realize that line of sight broadcast TV would never have worked in the mid 50s if the earth were flat? You know that? They built these towers to, to transmit it. And the higher towers were necessary to, to cover a larger area based on the radius of the Earth. Absolute. Uh, three Ron says, Miss, uh, simple observation, clouds lit up from underneath at dawn and sunset is impossible on flat Earth. I see this all the time. Yeah, how do you explain the bottom of a, a cloud being illuminated? 
the light of the sun. Yeah, but if, if oh my gosh, they can. Well, for all three of the pets that we have, this is raccoon. <laughs> go see right. Look in the camera. There you go. Are you trying to to get, uh, convert me to back to Globe Earth based off your your two pets? No, that's that's <laughs> just my kid likes to have them on camera. These, yeah. What do you think? Really, give, yeah. give me knuckles. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. So yeah, it, it, how high is the sun? I do not know. How high is this? You claim the sun is 93 mountains. Yeah, I'm asking for away. the flat earth answer. How high I is the sun? I don't know. How do you, okay. I already said, I don't know how high the sun is. If, how do you know how far away the sun the is? If the earth were flat, it would be easy to triangulate the height of the sun. But it doesn't work. So one more topic where the distance to the sun is empirically measured for the globe and no answer is presented for flat earth. But how do you know the sun is 93 million miles away? It's been measured. How? I'll show you. So yes. all I've seen, when I've tried to look it up myself, it's like, oh, well, we saw the color orange and we determined it was 93 million miles away. That's not, that's not how it was done. But I'll show you. I'm happy to show you. So here is, uh, here it is. What do people know about the sun? So in the 50s, people bounced radar off the sun. Here is a picture of the actual radar array used. Oh, this is from the 60s. The actual radar array used. It's it's like a kilometer long. It's really big. It's it's a massive big thing that they they built. Uh they they, they did it. About a thousand daily radar experiments have been made at of the sun at El Campo, Texas since April 1961. This paper presents some of the results of these experiments. This is on my website, mc2.net slash sun. So they sent a, a pulse towards the sun for 16 minutes, and then they stopped transmitting and started listening because 16 minutes was about the round trip time. And they got the echo. For the next 16 minutes, the average transmitted power is 500 kilowatts. Incredibly powerful. Then this is another one, I think, here where they got time 900. And so I'm going to roll down here. There we go. 980, 960. So they did one at 1,000 seconds, that first one. And then this other one here, I didn't, I didn't show you. They got 960 seconds. So we average those, we get 980 seconds plus or minus 20 seconds. When we bounce the radar off the sun, it travels the distance twice. You divide that time in a half, you get 490 plus or minus 10 seconds for the one-way time for the to the sun. We know the speed of light. Radar is, is light, it's photons. We can do the, the basic math to get the distance. 146,000 or a million kilometers or 146 billion meters. And with our margin of error, we have 143 to 149 million kilometers, which is between 98, or sorry, 89 and 93 million miles. So there is an empirical measurement of the distance to the sun. There's other ways that people have done it using different techniques, more accurate, more math involved, more complicated again, on my website, mctune.net slash sun. This is the easy one because we know how fast light travels and we know how long it took. There you go. I'll have to do more research on the speed of light because that seems like a, a debatable topic. The speed of light is not a debatable topic. It, it, it is absolutely not a debatable topic for the speed of light. Nobody is like, oh, I wonder what the speed of light is. People have known. The speed of light is known. Well, so that's how, that's one way 
to know the distance to the sun. The thing is about science is you want to repeat things. And you want to repeat things in different ways. And if you repeat something in different ways and get the same answer, well, that's extra confirmation. So again, on my website there, mc2.net slash sun is uh, two or three other measurements of the distance to the sun, and they agree. When you get high agreement in different methods, then you get higher and higher confidence in, in the accuracy. So, once again, we have an answer based on empirical measurements for the globe, and for, the, for flat Earth, we have nothing. And flat Earthers have said, the sun is a particular elevation, about 3,000 miles. Some have said <coughs> the sun is inside the clouds. Can't be both. In fact, if it was inside the clouds, it would be moving at an amazing speed inside our atmosphere. You'd hear sonic booms like crazy, yet we don't. And for some reason, the picture that show videos that claim that the sun is inside the clouds, the sun isn't actually moving at all. Seems they're misinterpreting something. Right? Well, there's a lot of stuff to look into. All right. Well, you asked for measurement of the distance of the sun. I gave it to you. All right. Um, Fade1231 says, when it's 1030 in South Africa and 430 a.m. in Western Australia, dark in both places, looking due south, we can see the Southern Cross. But on flat Earth, they should be looking in different directions. Well, I've also seen a, like the photo of when the North and South Pole are pretty darn close for the globe. There is no photo of the North and South Pole being close. Uh, all right. <laughs> what in the crap are you talking about? It's like when you take uh, like the... Never mind. Don't worry about it. Uh, do you mean like an extreme fisheye lens? That's showing you a 360 degree view and you can see both of them and it's highly distorted. Like the, the time lapse photos where you see like you see this star circling in one direction and then the other. Yeah. And, taken and the taken from, like, Oh, how do you explain that on the flat earth? And it's like, well, where's your North and South pole again? Taken from near the equator. That is what is predicted on the globe. It's what we predict. You should see when you're near the equator, Look one direction, you should see the North Celestial Pole. Look the other direction, you should, should see the South Celestial Pole. What if you see the stars rotating in opposite directions in the same photo? If it's a, a fisheye lens that's giving you a 360 degree view, then you absolutely should. But it's it's not one photo like like this kind of photo. It's a, it's a camera that's taking... 180 or 360 degrees view in, in all directions simultaneously. That's what you should see. Right? Uh, all right. Tim Pryor says, what's more logical, a small group of people on YouTube has debunked thousands of years of knowledge or a small group of YouTube <laughs> that, are, that are just are not that smart? Well, I've it feels like people. Closer. It feels like the the groups defending the globe are just as small. <laughs> All of science? No, I mean like the people that are actively, de de you know, debating flat earthers. It's a pretty small group compared to. It's, it's entertainment for intelligent people. We do it for fun. But oh. but seriously, nobody takes flat earthers seriously. Really, I mean, it, pe nobody at NASA is like, oh. I hope the flat earthers, blah, blah, blah. They don't care. They have a job to do. They put rockets up. SpaceX, they don't care a damn. They don't give a damn about, about flat earthers. They are busy putting up satellites so that they can sell uh, satellite internet. Satellite which, which, which I used this weekend at, at uh, camping. No photos of satellites. Too dangerous. Many photos of satellites. You can you can see the photos and videos of the Starlink satellites going across the sky. Like the cart. Oh, yeah. Have you never seen that? Did you not look that up? I've After seen them. I don't. All right, there you go. 
Uh, Mr. QTube first name fast says, if all music was 432 hertz, wouldn't that be a continuous tone? I'll explain it. Um, it normal A, uh, A440 is 440 hertz. And uh, some collection of people who really don't quite understand the physics behind it have have said that uh, you need to drop it by 8 hertz and tune everything to instead of A440, A432. And the reasoning for that is is very convoluted and is based on a bunch of arbitrary things, not actually based on the universe or anything like that. But it so caught the on. The reasons are not explainable to the average Joe, once again. <laughs> I, mean, okay, that, that's just I, I would be happy to, to go over is not it on a different, I, I'd be right. happy to go over it on a different day, but I'm not going to get into it right now. But the the but I've gone through the process that the 432 people have claimed is the way to go. But in the end, it is based on human invented arbitrary distances, uh, like the mile, for example, and the second. The second is just an arbitrary time unit. Anyway. And so anyway, they, they, they say, well, if you tune it to 432 hertz, which is just 8 hertz less, not a whole lot, that all sorts of things happen. They also claim that, that tuning forks from different old composers had different tuning frequencies, which typically are not true, don't have any, any uh, backing evidence. So anyway... Uh, Hera Bindu says he should join Brilliant.org and start learning how math describes ballistic motion. Don't try to start with gravity and thermodynamics. That's a good idea. Hey, that's a great idea. Go to Brilliant.org and learn how math describes ballistic motion. Ballistic motion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, listen, back to this star one here. How can the flat Earth have two celestial poles? Again, predicted on the globe not predicted on flat earth same problem the star is always in the same location but they're not they actually move you just repeated somebody without actually doing your own investigation well you can you can look at the rotation of stars and see that they move in a perfect circle which again would not work flat earth would predict that they'd be an ellipse unless you're at the north pole None of these actually work for flat Earth. Anybody that has an understanding of how uh, it's perspective, actually, if you're not directly under the center of rotation, the star should form an ellipse, not a circle, for flat Earth. But they form circles. Weird. <laughs> Give me one sec. I'll be right back. I'll go to that. All right. I, I gotta <laughs> this is going long. Um Microraptor has something. I think. Is this about Oh <laughs> Microraptor started a call. I can't be in the call right now. Uh, I sent something on Discord. Um, let me see here. Let me jump down to it. Oh, poor Scott. Got nothing. <laughs> Just misunderstanding. All right, let's see. Reason music theory from Heat Shield. Music sound travels through the air is relatively high and low pressure waves next to each other, pockets of air, which transfer their force to adjacent areas of air, all reacting to the to the forces acting on them. I don't really have a summary, but maybe you could work that in with atmospheric pressure and forces. Uh, <laughs> I see that effed up world once wanted to talk with PhD Tony and PhD Tony's like, nah. <laughs> the stream while he's... I'd rather get music lessons from MC2 than Scott says, hi, Co. Uh... <laughs> All right, uh, Microraptor. Okay, yeah. Do you have your your message here? I'm looking. I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, the call was an accident. Okay. Mike Rub, did you have a comment? Go ahead and, and uh send it send it in there. Oh man. This is getting long. We need to wrap it up here. All right. All right. So you're all gonna look in the flat earth now, all right? Um well I you just need that empirical backing, I guess. Uh all right. <laughs> Just a little more empirical. Yeah, I do have that ten thousand dollars for the. Uh... I also have a ten thousand dollar gravity challenge. Well, you got that flat horizon. I don't know. You want to send me that ten grand? But it's not flat. Anyway, uh, Michael Rapper says in your debate with Mikey, you calculated the elevation of the sun on flat Earth. From Mikey's location, it was three thousand eight hundred ninety-five miles, and from your location, three thousand one hundred five miles. I did it from Stockholm, Sweden, my location, and I got 2,425 miles with the same map. Simple, um, it's it's simple triangulation, stuff covered in about 8th grade math. Um, if if the Earth were flat, then then you would just be able to, to get the height of the sun pretty easily, or the stars, or, or the moon, or anything like that. But when we do it, presuming flat earth we get a different answer depending on your location which isn't possible but Doesn't i don't work. understand because when you do your angles you're always presuming a flat earth it's when a flat I'm, when I'm hypothesizing that and then testing the hypothesis yes i but do, do presume that, like that. low model as well there's no curved no. baseline Never in the globe model do we presume that that the that the Earth is flat when we're doing celestial navigation. But that's not what I'm talking about at the moment. So try to stay on topic. When testing the height of the sun, because we were talking about that just a minute ago, for flat Earth. Because I'm at 45 degrees north latitude in Minneapolis, on the day of the equinox, the sun is over the equator, right? Well, I know that I am 45 degrees latitude from the equator so i can just multiply 45 times the number of miles per degree latitude and that gives me 3105 miles that's how far i am from the equator right yeah <laughs> um and the sun on that day at local solar noon is at 45 degrees in elevation so doing the math for flat earth testing the hypothesis of flat earth from my location in minneapolis the sun must be 3105 miles elevation but when we do the same test at different locations we get different elevations for the sun okay. falsifying the hypothesis it doesn't work Flat Earth falsified again. But you'd have to have the background in, in a little bit of math there to do it. Um, King Ed V says, how does radar have a horizon if the Earth is flat? You can only go so far with radar. And it's based on the height of the, uh, the radar tower. goes as far as it goes i guess no explanation for flat earth explanation for for globe all right alyssum says uh can't we stop having mentally damaged people on it's calling you mentally damaged well yes that's what's expected when you point out the issues of the heliocentric model <laughs> Warren Evans says that cameras are good as telescope, yet I bet he doesn't know the difference between optical zoom and digital zoom. Do you? I'm just reading the chat. All right. I, I'm stuff. guessing he doesn't. All right. I just, yeah, there's just so much, so it, much love. It, 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 yep. <clears throat> Um, design song one says musicians are lying about music theory. Hashtag flat notes. 
I mean, there's just things you can logically think about and realize they're ridiculous. <laughs> you, you should you should play all your music tuned to A four thirty two in the key of thirteen flats. Frequency. What, I mean, what, before, what would, wait, what would that be? What would that be? If you had thirteen flats in your key signature. I, I feel like you're only argument is to ask questions that you know i don't know the answer to why don't you know the answer to that i do and i'm not a music teacher i don't know i don't i don't watch this channel enough apparently scott that would just be playing the entire song one half note down okay you could tune your guitar one half note down uh, That's a very simple thing to do. Tim Pryor says, I have a P1000. My telescope costs less. It does a better job. Cameras are not telescopes. Once again, there's a reason for that. Uh, many telescopes are not refracting telescopes. They're reflecting telescopes. And that's uh, part of the reason for that is it deals with chromatic aberration better. The drawback of having a reflective telescope is you cannot see space vampires. Fun fact. Still waiting on that footage of a giant telescope zoom focusing yeah, in. That's on. not how telescopes work. Green Bull no. says this guy is <laughs> just in love with being anti establishment and is going to fall for a lot of stupid stuff because he wants to reject anything mainstream. I think that's how he got here. We've already been over this. We can see too far. That's. You can't okay. actually see that. Nathan it's Thompson's... No, you have to assume the heliocentric model. Nathan Thompson's oh. duck costume says, Scott, you seem like a nice enough guy, but for crying out loud in 432 hertz, go audit some science or math classes at a community college. Hey, there's an idea. There's some things you have to experience and not just think about. So convert all your music to 432 and tell for a, a said, month and tell like me you point. go back to 440. Um, three Ron says, I have Star Lake internet. My dish points at the sky. No photos no, of satellites. Yeah, except there That's, are. And no flat earther has an explanation. Link for it. one photo of a satellite. I'd be impressed. One photo of a satellite? That doesn't right. look fake as fuck. Be prepared to, to be, and, and you're expert in, in photography to... I've got, a really good, I've got a pretty good bullshit meter, so. Yeah, yeah, that does it. Your your expertise in photographic forensics is, is what? Is I can tell the difference between a cartoon and a reality. Let's see. I'm pretty sure there's articles saying that there's no photographs of satellites because it's too dangerous because they're moving too fast. Don't think about it. Don't question it. Just trust that we went to the moon, I'm, even though. I'm pretty sure you're wrong. I mean, I remember watching not too long ago, like the ISS footage of them going to space. Um, and it was like, there's some parts that you're just like. All right. So. Oh, my God. I have here. A photograph from NASA of the satellite of the yeah of the Hubble Space Telescope. Doesn't look like a PlayStation Two after game. after it was launched. There you go. There is, as you requested, a photograph of a satellite. That's honestly that's the best photograph I've seen of the satellite. There you go. <laughs> How long did that take me? Not very long. <laughs> Google does not show you these images. I I just right there. It's right on their right on their website, and here it is. The Hubble telescope floats above the Earth after the conclusion of its 2002 servicing mission. It does kind of look like a tin trash can, but I'll ignore that and say it looks pretty good. Well, that's that's what it it's supposed to look like. It it has reflective material on the outside so that it doesn't get heated up. So there you go. Asked and given. 
Proven wrong. The All earth right. must be round. We're spinning around. All right. Uh, Mr. Big uh, Big Potato. I like the data. Says money cause kittens deserve all the treats. He likes he likes the kitties. Uh Obi-Wan says, Scott, Scott, Scott. The average Joe understands. You're just <laughs> he says you're less intelligent than the average Joe. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we need to get average Joe to debate Scott on who is smarter. Um Tim Pryor says he believes people on YouTube that's never used a sextant or has physics degrees then denies empirical evidence that is testable. Just saying. That is that is absolutely the case. All of the people on YouTube that talk about sextants and flat earth have never actually used a sextant to get their position or use the measurements to get their position. I've videos of, of the top YouTube channels of people using sextants and they all assume a flat horizon. No. No, they don't. They absolutely don't. That's a complete lie. All right. Liquid Flame says, Tune, your kids are lucky to have you as a teacher. Scott, you seem like a nice guy. I hope you come around and figure out how silly Flat Earth is. It is. There's just, there's just so many things about the heliocentric model that are just so out there. Well, what one thing is empirically confirmed that is so out there? The water. The water, wa water at rest finds its level. Level is a curve. So what empir what measurements do you have that water is flat? Empirical measurements of flatness. Uh, a measurement tool, something that uses to measure. What, send it. Where, you've never seen it. I've seen them. They're like this long, and they measure something level, and they have little things of water in them to tell you it's a straight line. Okay. And and how how was that? How did that confirm... Flatness. How did? What was the margin of error of that? What was well, the... and then you're like, well, okay, this is interesting. Let me apply the curvature calculator. Oh, and hey, we can see things that we're not supposed to see. Here's, oh, and what does Scott, say? You're not. Those aren't actually there. They're behind the curvature. Here's the thing, Scott. You, you didn't ever actually see any measurements of the flatness of the surface of water. You've never seen it. No flat earther has ever right measured the surface of water to be flat. All measurements of the surface of water that I've ever seen show that it is curved. You're a very good and, debater. I'll give you that. But all you need to do is go find a measurement of the surface of water. No, no, but this is the problem. There Let's say you have already pointed this out. If I go get a, a good camera with a zoom and I go to a lake and I'm like, hey, a I can see an object with too far. Zoom. You're going to tell me it's refraction. Scott, You're not going to have any clue Scott, what's level. Scott, a camera with zoom is not the instrument to measure the surface of water. That's not the instrument to do it. We're looking at a large body of water, right? I mean, a lake, an ocean. Yeah, you need to do it the right way. A camera Just isn't the correct instrument. Taking into account the atmospheric conditions, perspective, the distance, the height of the observer... It's all it's been done over and over again. Lasers, mountains, it's, it's, cities. None of those are measurements of the, the surface of the water. That's Where's the thing. It? No flat earthers ever Missing done it. Curvature they is don't refractive. know they don't know how to measure the curvature of this or flatness of the surface of water. No flat earther has the the background to actually know how to do it. You need a surveyor. That's the best, one of the one of the best professions to do it, and they've done it. Well, I'll just have to take your word on that, I guess. Tim Pryor says, "Saw a YouTube video on how to do surgery on myself. Guess I should trust that over an actual surgeon." I mean, you shouldn't just trust doctors and yeah, they they don't throat. know how to set bones. That's about all they know how to do. <laughs> let's, 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 okay. The, the pinnacle of medicine is to, is to reduce inflammation with chemicals. People really believe that it's sad. It's not, it has nothing to do with health. That's just, that's just, you can look at it that way. It doesn't mean it's react. It yeah, doesn't so, mean it's the so best if, way to go about it. So if somebody gets a knife stuck in them and it's piercing through their, 
you're talking about emergency parts. situation. I'm talking about definitely just uh, ignore situation. them. All right. Uh, Parabindu says, how the cir circumstances of, of both the tropics the same in between them is is the larger equator. How are the circumstances of both the, the tropics the same? But in between them is the larger in, uh, equator, the, the circumferences. So the, the measured circumference of the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn are the same. You know that. But no flat earther can explain that. Uh, that is kind of interesting. Yeah. Tim Pryor for $10 says, you claim we could zoom in boats after they've gone over the curve. Why not the sun? I've seen the sun lifted back up. No, you haven't. You've seen yeah, glare. No, it goes down, looks like it's setting. You zoom in, it goes up. Yeah, you've seen glare. No, it's what not glare. Seen? It's what perspective. You, you zoom in, the sun is not actually setting. It's just it's just perspective. Yeah. It's convergence. After the sun sets, zoom it in. Bring it back with zoom. After the after the light has completely disappeared after from the sun the sets, yeah. If if zoom can bring gone things from back, perspective whatsoever. If well, if zoom can bring things back from perspective, as you say, from over the horizon, as you say, then zoom should bring back the sun after it's gone over the curve or behind the horizon. Never happened. And as I said early on, and you will not find this. You only will find the other thing. You will never find zoom changing how much is obstructed bottom up. The only thing that you will see is you will see something too small to see zoomed in and then you can see it again. That's not going over the curve. You, you'll never see a mountain being <laughs> Don't change the topic. The view Don't change the topic. It's the same topic. It's no, the same no, thing. You're just thinking of. You're, you're saying you've said that zoom changes whether or not something has gone over the horizon. It does not. Never does. No, I'm not saying that it's completely gone. I'm saying when it's about to set, the sun's about to set, you can zoom in and it lifts back up. Again, and you are correct when you say it's perspective because the gap between the horizon and the sun is small when it's zoomed out and big when it zoomed in. Again, small when it zoomed out, big when it zoomed in. So, all right. Um, Tim Pryor, did he really just agree that I should listen to YouTube videos on doing surgery on myself? I'm out. All right, this is the last one. Uh, Warren Evans says, if the sun can illuminate half the Earth east to west, why can't it do the same north to south? Well, I mean, it depends on the location of the sun. It's uh, If the sun is up near the North Pole, it's going to be sunny all the time. If you're living in the northern hemisphere. Yeah, and, and when the sun is... When it's, say, December, you can see the sun 24 hours a day in Antarctica. Yep. Oh, 24 hours of it? No. Yeah, you can. I, I've seen those videos. They don't seem to cut out a lot. <laughs> what? Do you want me to prove you wrong again? I, I've seen those videos. I just... All right, hold on. Um, I'll... I'll... I'll prove it wrong again. Uh, all right. Wrong one. Hold on. Do, do, do. Somebody wants to, you to see the, uh, the Wikipedia article on... Wikipedia, trusted source, I'm sure. On, on uh, Superior Mirages. So. Yes. So Wikipedia, um, I, I like to look at their their citations. That's the best way to go. 
I'm pretty sure if you ask Google if men can get pregnant, they tell you yes. So sorry if I don't immediately assume they're telling the truth. Uh, I don't think Google's going to say that. Yeah, Google it right now. Can men get pregnant? And yes, they will answer. That's the system for you. Just a controlled narrative. And you, you, so you question Wikipedia, and then you're like, oh, Google. Google only indexes things. It doesn't check Google it for, ver for, for veracity. Uh, Wikipedia actually has people that monitor things and, and remove things that are incorrect. According to their opinion and perspective. Yeah. Google does nothing of the sort. It, it just indexes stuff. Google is Google will not show you anything, anything you actually want to see. All right, there it is. Yeah, found it. All right, I have to. I have to. This has music that I can't let. Place so just a second here. What what's the answer now? Oh. All right. Here is, all right, people didn't hear you say that I had, there's, there's audio that I can't, it's just a song, it's a copyrighted song on this. All right, 24 hour sun in Antarctica, five days uninterrupted even. I've seen the videos already. You've seen this video? There's just at certain times where the sun obviously all of a sudden it looks artificial. Not yet. Twenty-four hours, five days in a row. It's looking pretty sketchy about now. It's looking absolutely fantastic. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. You've pre-selected a conclusion. And because this contradicts your pre-selected conclusion, you must that, use that science right denialism. That right there does not look normal. That right there. Yeah, it's it's running more than real time. That does right not here. look natural. Do you understand that this is sped up? It's a time lapse? Yeah, it should still look normal. Do you, no, time lapse doesn't look normal. It looks faster. There you go. And and you can see a 24-hour sun in southern uh, South America as well. I just, you need to be closer to December 20th. This you see for six months. But now the sun looks pretty real. Yeah, it's just hard to tell. I mean, it's like when you look into the moon landing and ISS missions, it's a it's different really, topic. It, you can't just like changing the topic. It's not a I different can't topic. Just stay on it's, the same topic. No, it's not because it's it's when you see so much fake, obvious fakery. But you're you not a photo forensics expert, so your opinion is worthless. When I see a leaf in front of the camera on the moon, I can assume it's there fucking. There is fake. no leaf in front of the camera on the moon. I've seen it. Wow. You slow it down. There you go. Oh, all of a sudden it doesn't look the same. Once again, asked and given. That's on Vimeo. So, all right. Dude, a couple more came in. Uh, it's Tim Pryor, 2 a.m. in the morning. I cannot zoom that damn sun back in. I want to see somebody change the amount of obstructed the zoom. Uh, King Ed the Fifth says, "I love how love how Flurfs talk about seeing too far, but can't explain how radar 
can't see too far. It sees the geometric horizon matching the radius of the Earth. And depending on who you're listening to, I guess. I've heard military people talk about seeing shit way too far with the radar. With radar? Who? Yeah. With radar? Uh, certain certain people. It's an easy claim to make. All right. Uh, gross. Uh, Mr. Potato. Big Potato again says, Scott, explain multiple sunsets with a drone. Ooh. Now you change the height of the observer and you can see farther. But why? There's an explanation for the globe, but no plausible mechanism for flat Earth. Well, I'm still still waiting on those plausible explanations of the globe. I've given them every single time. You claim you did, but... King at the Fifth is, says, I'm retired Navy ATC, and he is just lying. Well, someone else is lying, then. That's what you're Probably, talking. yeah, if they're flare fits, probably. Uh, Tim Pryor says, it look, if it looks sketchy, tell him to... Book a cruise and look at it for himself. Anyone can do this. You can go to Antarctica. People run marathons there on Antarctica. They also run marathons around the North Pole, which is insane. The the South the South America um, marathon is not actually sorry. The Antarctica marathon is not not actually around South Pole. It is it is uh, closer so to the the water. If, if the sun orbits, if the Earth orbits the sun, and s- um, I'm told it's it slows down by one percent every year. It circulates. No, it varies because it's an elliptical orbit. It's elliptical, and, and it slows and, down and, because and, of the elliptical. Well, it slows down and speeds up. Yeah, that's how do we laws. not feel that? Sixty-six thousand miles per hour. How do we not like feel 1%? that? That's crazy. Okay, what, what is what is the human vestibular's system ability to change to sense changes in velocity? Okay, this this is exactly why there's flat earthers. It's like a simple person with just no background asks a question, and there's no fucking straight answer. It's there always is a straight hard. answer. The straight not answer smart is to even ask the Scott, question. The straight answer is your ability to sense changes in velocity is not sensitive enough to sense that change in velocity. It's a drastic change in velocity. Though. It is not a drastic change in velocity over the six months that it takes to change that velocity. It takes six months from peak to peak. From fastest to slowest is six months. If I'm driving my car at two miles an hour and I abruptly stopped, I'm going to feel it. You're not abruptly. It takes six months. If I slowly stop, I'm going to feel it. It takes six months to stop. We're talking about a drastic speed with 66,000 mile, 1%. That's a lot of... Okay. You have six mo- six years to feel that. Do the math. Did you do the math? It's Did just... you check the human vestibular system's ability to sense ver- variations in velocity? No, you did not do the math. You do not know the human vestibular system's ability to sense changes in velocity. All of that you would just need to do. It would require middle school math to be able to calculate the difference in da- the, the, the per second dif- difference. And it would take a couple searches on the internet to find out the human vestibular system's limits. You did not do any of that. You just watched a flurf video and parroted it. Stop parroting nonsense without checking it out. This is good questions. No, it's a terrible question. It's a really (laughs) terrible question because you could do the math yourself. It's like it it just feels like as soon as you question the heliocentric model, all of a sudden the thing is you aren't actually questioning it. You are coming up with a goofy thing and then not actually doing the analysis. Do the analysis. You never did. Have you so, never heard a flat earther say, do your own research? Have you ever heard that? I've heard that. You did not do your own research. So don't ask the question until after you've done your own research. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so 
So go ahead, figure out the the variation in, in speed from highest to lowest. Divide that out by the number of seconds in time because typically the changes in velocity are measured per second, right? And then check out the human vestibular system's ability to, met, to sense changes in velocity. It's nowhere near. I can tell you that right now. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> you triggered a few people. Tim Pryor says he already admitted that we should 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 listen to oh no uh to YouTube over professionals. There's the problem. It's it's globe globe professionals. NA but, NA says uh, we have globe. flat earthers because a small percentage of people are just too stupid. It's it's not it's it's not anything that you say. It's just that people the people that are flat earthers don't have the background and don't understand. Every single thing that you've brought up is you you don't understand. That's what it is. Warren Evans says you're sitting on a chair that can spin. Spin yourself once in 24 hours and see if you can feel the spin. It, it's just like what you would expect if you like if yeah. No, you like, didn't do your own research. No, it's like if a if like uh, a religious group came to my door and and I started asking them questions and they would just say you just don't understand because you're not us. You know, it's like come on, like give me Scott. something. This and isn't a religious thing, though. You could have chosen to learn this in high school, but you chose not to. Perfectly fine to do. You could choose to learn it now, which you have so far chosen not to. You should I, choose I, to. I'm going to go look through this video, and we're, I'm going to look up the stuff that you brought up. I right. just, Tim Pryor says, this, and this is exactly why flat earthers are a tiny percent of the world's population. Again, go into Antarctica and watch the 24-hour sun yourself. If you want to, if you don't believe the videos from Antarctica, the way to test it is to go to Antarctica and see if that it is, happens. That's actually if a really good point. If it <laughs> happens, then you know, right? Or send somebody so what, that what you time trust. Of the, what time of the year should I go to Antarctica? Mid-December. Mid-December, go to Antarctica. I'm going to see the sun 24-7. Yeah. Okay. There, there's there's cruises there there are job openings there i don't know if they need a music teacher in antarctica i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, but there are seems, job openings that seems like the ultimate proof right there peter collins for <clears throat> 129 uh, czk please do your homework scott this is truly painful it really isn't that hard and <clears throat> let me uh, that th this seemed to be something that you didn't grasp, right? Right. This is this algebra is ninth grade algebra, right? Yeah, I'm just, I just, you did. I just don't know if this it's assuming things class. that aren't supposed to be. Assuming. You did this class. The fall rate of an object. I get it. You you took algebra one, probably in ninth grade, and and passed it unless you cheated you passed you can do this this is within your your skill set now you didn't you didn't take the physics class would have helped you all right why kick a moo cow eight by five says given that gravity is measurable and observable does scott agree that pineapple does belong on pizza you shouldn't be eating pizza in the first place. But but if you were, because, I mean, you, you're drinking that drink that you shouldn't be drinking. Pineapple um, is pretty... Okay, if you're eating... Okay, don't judge. I used to work... I used to do that. I worked at a firewood pizza place for a few years. Um, if you have a barbecue sauce base, pineapple is really good. If you have a marinara sauce base, pineapple is not good. And you shouldn't eat any of that. You should eat... You should get off that crap. Pineapple. Why I'm just hearing pineapple belongs in pizza. Tim Pryor says well, rotation is calculated in degrees, not miles per hour. That's why we laugh at you, because you don't understand this concept and stop watching YouTube videos to educate yourself. Unless it's Walter Lewin. Go ahead there. Um so so the 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 amount and this is this is really it. 
that there's there's two things that are happening with the earth going around the sun it's it's a linear motion and it's an angular motion and typically when you're like the earth rotating not just the orbit it's it's typically better to say it as a uh, angular change so the earth rotates once every 24 hours this is a a much larger amount so the earth's rotation in a day is is significantly higher than the earth's orbit around the sun so if you're gonna be like well how come we can't feel the the earth rotating or orbiting around the sun that's small the larger one is how come we can't feel the earth rotating but it's the same answer the human vestibular system only measure can only sense changes in angular velocity it doesn't sense actual angular velocity so you remember that game that that people would play where you'd put your forehead on a baseball bat and spin around uh, yeah right and usually that they want you to do it a certain number of times and that's because the the, the vestibular system has has basically tubes inside your head and liquid inside the tubes and in, if you rotate for 20 seconds, the, the, the liquid in the tubes matches the speed of rotation about. And so you stop sensing that actual rotation after about 20 seconds. So if you get somebody spinning for about 20 seconds on a baseball bat and then have them stop, then they've got that, that fluid rotating and it makes you feel dizzy. That's why. It's, but, it's, it's just like just... Thinking just the basic process of thinking about it, you're you're it's a when you're going around the sun and the it slows down a little bit. It's like all of a sudden gravity's strong enough to make us not feel any of this motion, but it's not strong enough to like pull like a drip of water off a leaf. You know, it's it just doesn't make any com like it like makes how do perfect I process sense any of this. If you had the oh my gosh do this do this all right you, you, all right what topic we need to pick a topic like okay what so topic gravity, gravity what one topic strong enough to hold us to the earth no, while it's no, no. Orbiting. you don't understand it what one topic what one topic will you look into and we can we can after you're satisfied that you have the background of this and i can okay the, the okay the, mo the one that is interesting to me the most is refraction i i really need to look into that one okay all right I will I will send you stuff and you 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 look it up on your own what refraction does and empirical measurements of it empirical evidence for it how it all works all right sounds good so we've got L Marju says uh Ushuia I'm probably pronouncing it wrong which is in Argentina it's very far south Argentina further down and longer daytime yes don't know if that's quite in the Arctic Circle, but or the Antarctic Circle. I think it's not, but uh, but certainly uh, the the sunset and sunrise times uh, don't match for for flat Earth, and certainly don't match for the angle. But anyway, it's been it's been a a while. We've been in here a while. It's been fun, S Scott. Thank you um, for coming, and let's do this. We'll, we'll look at refraction and maybe have a focused discussion on one topic well, I, I honest i i know i've got like a year of shit to research before i'm ready to really debate this again all, all, all the shit that we've covered but if we do one topic then it doesn't take that long we don't need to go on 10 topics i, I like to be thorough i like to really understand shit so all right warren but, evans uh, says wow. if someone told you that you can download an app that will make your phone waterproof would you try it out um no because i don't believe in the heliocentric model so i'm not that global Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the projection the irony all right i know I, it's uh, it's honestly like i i, I really like in debating this topic with people like well when you're on like even on facebook when you come across someone that's seriously open-minded it's it's a really fun discussion um, but it usually tends to be one side or the other. I obviously I'm on one side, but, um, but I, I, I like to question shit. I am capable of being like, 
put I'm capable of putting flat earth aside and looking at something. I, I promise you. I just I just seen so much that I'm like, it just seems ridiculous. But All but right, if I'll... refraction proves to be true, that would honestly be big. If refraction proves to be something really really powerful, that would that would really make me question a lot. But if not, then and then we'll we're more back to square one. All right. Well, D6 for 50 Czech Karunas says, if I want to take my telescope on, uh, on vacation to Sydney and watch Mars with my family on, and then, oh, he has the date all goofy, on <laughs> uh, 2020 08 13. What model would I will I use to predict where to look? Well, you don't have to assume any model when looking up at the stars. You can just look at the stars. What? Well, but if you're going to time it, and you want to know whether or not Mars is even visible at that particular time, and then that particular location. And that brings you back to the question of, is NASA and, looking at the solar system model, or are they using an algorithm based off past you know observations i don't know because yeah they're they're using vsop 87 and you could too uh it's it's even been written in python you can for free you can download and install pi ephemeris and uh, find out uh using using the model and then look at the source code people to see what it's doing so there it is i'm gonna have to need to get to now i need to get now i need to debate uh Nathan Oakley and, and then Mitchell and ask them the same shit and see what they say and tell them and both of you will tell me what to look at and I'll look at both of them and see which one makes sense. All right. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Thank you, everybody uh, else. Um, big news coming up for the channel in the next week. No Thanks for having me. It is yet. I love you, Globers. It's okay to let go of your globe model. It won't hurt you. Oh, people wanted a, a, a song. Can you play a song? You have a guitar there you can play? I have a guitar. Uh, let's see. Can you play it based on a 47 note octave? We're playing. No, that's not what we should play. So you think you can tell A ball from a flat plane I don't know if you can Oh, let's go the original <laughs> Where's the curve? Is it really a refraction? I'm not so sure Do you think you can tell? Big tune, thanks for having me. I don't know if you're telling the truth. I'll have to look to see And all of you this gone People Just think for yourself Yeah Alright uh, People were saying it sounded Flat That is horrible, right? Like 8, eight hertz flat, maybe Alright, well, Scott, thank you all right. And we'll see everybody later. See ya.